jumps into a bit of a loop and let's get into the tomb uh so in the last stream uh the greece area is done and now we are in egypt where we will find the last piece of the skion we've currently got two two items of skion in our inventory and uh hopefully hopefully we'll get the last bit uh, you want to carefully drop down you got an extra little ledge there um Oh boy. I remember bits of this level, but I don't particularly remember all of it. Why is... Maybe that's a door? Maybe it's a door. Yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so today is... Yeah, the 4th of October. Um, I thought it'd be nice. Let's have a little spooky munchlax in the corner. Let's... Uh, <laughs> You know, color the, the channel orange for the month. That'll be good fun. Uh, I realize I didn't color the background of the stream alert video. Um, it's a technicality I think no one's really going to care about. Ah, okay. I'm looking at it going like, oh, what's going on there? So, but no, yeah, today, yeah, no, it's October, uh, which makes me realize, oh my gosh, this year is almost done. Not quite. We still got another three months, but that's nine months down, and that's the longer of the nine well the longer of the nine months you know what i mean though like uh well i guess it's eight months in the year with 31 days and two of them are now and i guess one of them one, one of the 30 days i don't know it's probably probably not the the shortest of the three months it's probably the longest of tied longest for the three months in a row uh but still uh this is this a box no it's not no so what am i blanking out on what did i just oh i just opened a door down there which reveals another box, which you can push. Is there any reason to push it? Other than a waste time? Uh, a waste time. <laughs> cool. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I always find Halloween's a very interesting time of year because one, Halloween only gets celebrated on the day. There's nothing really, I mean, it's, it's Hallow's Eve. It's literally the day before Hallow's Day. So, uh, yet, and yet, Halloween is a pretty special day because of all the wonderful, if I was to say, westernized culture around it. You know, this idea of, like, you know, fancying in, in, the, uh, in the macabre a little bit. Um, you know, divulging in, in a... Superstitions, I think, is probably the best way to to put it. And I'm like, man, you know, like, that's a real, like, special day for me. Because that's a day where, like, things, like, you know, a lot of people celebrate it. Or at least, like, go, oh, it's Halloween. And, like, you know, knowingly are just along for the ride. And not necessarily in for, like, any kind of, like, hard celebration. I don't know. Is that, is that a bit of a weird take for me? I don't know. I always find that. It's just, it's just like, 
you know, people will celebrate Halloween for Halloween's sake. And it's like, but yet, of course, you don't want to not perpetuate. You want, you don't, like, no one goes, oh, Halloween's stupid. Um, at least compared to other public holidays. <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's this interesting one that's just, like, there. Um, and yeah, it's not, uh, actually a public holiday or really any kind of, it's not even a recognized holiday in Australia, I don't believe. It's just like, you know, we're, we'll do it. We'll do the day where people give candy. I love that you can see the face just in the corner. Look at this wonderful sphinx. Indoors. We got some cats. Oh, watch out. They're about to win a grand final on us. Well, that's a topical reference. Someone's going to look at the upload date and go, ah, okay. And then everyone who's watching this, like, l much later on will just, like, scratch their heads. Go, oh, what's happening around this date? Uh, yeah, I realize I've got, like, the double orange going on. I've got the chat orange and the game is going to be mostly orange because sand. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't particularly... Oh my gosh, I forgot he comes this early. Look at his dude, look at his dude. He's just... Coming to give you a hug, a little mummy. I what? <laughs> I was about to say it's like ah, uh, I mean, and then he blows up. <laughs> Why not? I was gonna say I don't have any like spooky games lined up. I have an option. Actually, I have two options. I got two options. I'm gonna go with the the more boring and like ah, uh, okay, I see what you're doing there, Blendo. Like kind of game. Um. I don't want to rule out the other one, but maybe I'll save that for next year. Um, I guess, so, the two games that I've got off the top of my head, and you heard it here first, and then maybe I'll play it. Uh, I was probably gonna, ah, okay, so there's a key in here. Yeah, I remember. Um, so the two games i got off the top of my head is Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which, uh, I, <laughs> I realized, I was like, oh, I could totally replace some, you know, the intermission music with spooky music, and I'm like, what game has spooky music? And that's... Pretty much the, the only one I could really think of off the top of my head, at least in the 20 minutes before the stream. So I'm like, oh, let's just put on some something of the night music, because I'm not in intermission really that long, so you're going to hear like one song and call it a day. Um, there's more keys, more pieces over there. Uh, I've forgotten the ultimate clue of, the, of this area. But I believe you got to climb up the Sphinx. Because the dude's like, you know, he's massive. Look at him. Uh, you just jump it? No. Maybe you climb it over there? Yeah, you climb it over here. Uh, but yeah, the other one that I had off the top of my head was uh, another PS1 game called uh, Muppet Monster Madness. It's a Spyro clone, and I forgot who the devs were, but I played it once... And thought it was a alright game, but considering I have been playing, I mean, you know, a lot of the games I had played were licensed PlayStation 1 era games that I own, um, you know, might as well be alright. What did I just pick up? I picked up a sapphire key. Now the question is, where do you put in the sapphire key? You got a gate there, there's no key for it there, I'm pretty sure... If I'm remembering right, it's... Is it one of these? Yeah, it might be that one, just there. We have the people who are playing this at 640 by 480. So I pop the key. No. No, that's not the key. Uh. <laughs> Rip me, because I'm playing it <laughs> at uh, 640 by 480. Done. Well, maybe I'll try here. I thought this was, you know, for the, the end of the area, but maybe it is for now. Pop the key in. Oh, it does fit. We do have the key fitting. Well, that's a perfect time to save. And, uh, yeah. Thank you for the stream. Thank <laughs> no, it's all good. So, yeah. The Egypt part of this game, I actually... I do like. I think it's it's very... I, I mean, like, Egypt is, is the perfect, you know, like tomb style game because it's like you can obviously chuck in mummies which <laughs> no way they already did it 
Uh, you got, like, a lot of, like... I mean, like, you know, you can have, like, Greek idols and stuff in in the Greece levels, which they did, I think. Yeah, they did. Uh, but there's nothing, like, you know, more definitely their culture, but also, like, you know, the, like, a lot of, like, ancient Egyptian stuff has a lot of very, like, mystic things. I think it's because none of it directly, like, correlates to, um, you know, it, it feels a bit indirect to, uh, more modern theologies, I think, off the top of my head. I don't know a lot of Egyptian stuff, but, like, stuff like, you know, oh, you bandage, um, someone, ah, oh, nah, the, the, the cat gave me a bit of a, give a bit of a lick, so, done. Alright, well, I'm gonna have to kill that other cat again. Um, I guess, like, the stuff of, like, uh, the worshipping cats, uh, although I think that's an interpretation, I don't actually think worshipping cats is the main thing. But it's like, you know, cat, like, you know, creatures like that. I, I feel like not as many theologies have, a uh, weird hybrid monsters like that. There's definitely some. Uh, I don't think we're gonna, you know, encounter it in this game, but I'm, I'm always thinking of the Medusa. Thinking about that Medusi, you know? Um, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, like, that's a bit of a hybrid kind of monster, where it's like, it's got a snake hair, it's got a snake tail, it's got a female face, it's got stone. Uh, that cat is long gone, just like the ex-girlfriend who will never return. Okay, well, I guess, easy pickings. I'm shooting ahead, there you go. There you go, 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 there you go. Mm. Okay, okay, we're good, we're good, we're cool. Is someone ping me on Discord? Who keeps doing that? Someone keeps doing that. I can't believe it. He's not behind me, is he? No, he's probably out there somewhere. We got a little bridge. Look, you got... You can't have a game in 3D and not have a bridge that's like, oh, you cross the bridge later. It's like, that's, you know, that's that's definitive. Hey, there's a crocodile. There's a crocodile. Hello there, crocodile. How you doing? All right. Crocodiles aren't that strong, I guess. Okay, let's see if I remember what's going on here. We've got uh, this wonderful, wonderful, like, little platform here. Lots of, lots of things here. Slopes. All the goods. So, we got a pool. I believe it's the pool home to a secret. It does. It's, it sails under something. Now, if only Lara can swim fast enough. I think she's fine. Um, but, she's fine if she locks onto this. There's a reasonably wide range that you can hold down the use key and sail to, like, the... The item, or the, the switch. Uh, this room, I remember breaking my neck so much on, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that a save. Um, yeah, I've got a... I guess... Oh, I've, def I've got one big topic and then I'll see where I tangent off to. Uh, but I guess the, the key big topic that I've got, uh, spawns from the what have I been playing for the past week. So, I will start off with that, and, uh, what I've been playing simply, uh, a couple of games, but the, the main one in this one is, uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War. Uh, today, actually, or yesterday, I finished the main story, and then today, I have ticked off 100%, at least in-game, on the game completion. There's still a couple of things where I do want to, you know, look at getting achievements, but, the uh, work of getting that game to 100% uh, in-game is done. There's nothing else that the game really claims to offer. All the achievements look like, oh, you gotta, you know, do a thing. Like, oh, like, uh, like do a nemesis mission with the same all three times or something. And it's like, oh, okay, that's just like a specific thing I gotta do. Um, I love this, like, jutting out bit, because it, it just looks so strange. Um, 
this is a bit of a weird puzzle. Uh, so you're supposed to go up there and pull that switch, and then you gotta do the long haul of setting up this box onto the ledge. At least, like, the track is simple, but, uh, since you can't really, well, you, you have to be able to stand on where you're pushing or pulling to, you're gonna see this beautiful set of, like, okay, so I'm gonna jump over here, and then pull it, oh, no, 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 and then pull, and then I gotta come back onto the other side, and push it one last time, I know, I know. You got a ledge here, you can at least go onto the ledge. You got this narrow opening as well, I don't think you can really see what's in there, but that actually opens up to the main room. So that gives you a bit of a bit of orientation that, yeah, okay. We're facing the main room. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess I can give a, a bit of a, a main game postmortem. There is a DLC. I kind of just started. Like, I don't think it's going to take me a ton of time, but I've just started in the sense of like, okay, I, I haven't gotten a full impression of it, so. Um, but as for the main game, I thought it was like, yeah, it's fine. It felt a little short when compared to, I guess, like what I was maybe expecting. I think the first game took me around like 25 something hours. This also took, ooh, ooh. They, they put a crock in the water as well, they, they know. But I'm probably going to break my neck because I'm going to land onto another platform. Uh, oh, wonderful, wonderful picture right there. <laughs> I think is this does this actually go away or is this just a wonderful window into a room with a key which you can you can jam the camera in and just know that there is a key in there okay um yeah so this is the thing is that yeah because there were two switches there you can now Open and climb your way into here. Which has a wonderful switch on the back of this, which you kind of have to see. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I thought the game of Shadow of War was fine. Good fine. I liked, I continue liking the, uh, the system of the orcs, um, you know, coming at you. Uh, by the end of the game, I did get a bit of repeat dialogue and repeat, like, you know, orc traits. And also, I got to this point where I kind of, you know, had a set of things I could just constantly kind of spam to best the orcs. I didn't really change my strategy throughout the game. Um, or, or, or I did throughout the game, but near the end... Okay, oh, we're fine. <laughs> yeah, you can see this ledge is just like, whew, who put this here? And down and down and down you go. I appreciate that this is a way to get down safely, though. While also nestling some wonderful secrets. Uh, yeah, the the game itself was fine. I thought the pacing was a bit odd. Uh, the game is broken down into three... Uh, three acts. I'm going to say three acts. Some people are going to say four, but you'll, I'll explain why. The first act of the game starts in a uh, man-led town of Minas Ethel. Um, where it kind of introduces you to all the games, or almost all the game's mechanics. Um, I think it was a fine starting point. It definitely, you know, introduces the villains, kind of streamlines you towards a bit of a story. Sure. Then what the game does is a bit of an interesting one. Once you hit Act 2, you're in a... Oh, actually, sorry. Act 1 also goes into another town. That is a wonderful secret. Just, oh. Um, it's like an orc camp. And, uh, ultimately the, the city falls after all the story stuff. Um... <laughs> oh, croc on the dial. Well, I, did I just trigger the boulder by hanging down here? I did. There's the death boulder. Nice. Good job, Lara. Oh, cool, I guess. <laughs> the best part is that the door is not even open. You can check a lock, but... Pff, it's just there to bait you, I guess. Uh, the real secret is down there, so how about let's <laughs> turn the camera 180 degrees somehow. And then, let's drop down. Uh, but yeah, uh, Act 2, once you get to it, uh, involves your character uh, starting to build 
their orc army. And so it starts teaching you the idea of you can dominate the orcs, convert them into your allies, and then, once you've got enough of them, you can send a group of them, along with yourself, into a fight against the orcs. There's, is there two doorways here, or is it just the one? It's two. I think this is, like, an optional way to go, because I believe that's a slippery slope that you can come back from. Uh, cannot come back from, rather. There we go. That is a door I probably, like, you know, do want to open. I don't remember this jump being uh, wonderfully obtuse somehow. I don't know why. Um, so yeah, you're building your orc army. Uh, in the meantime, the game, so the game kind of railroads you into learning those mechanics and then capturing the first citadel. Then the main goal of the game is just to capture the other citadels. And once you captured all four, the game opens up the final mission, which is titled Act 3 in the game, but it's one singular mission and then the game's over. Um, which I feel like is a bit of an interesting pacing thing, because it's like you've got these prior acts where you do a bunch of stuff in them, and then suddenly, you know, here's Act 3, which is just like story conclusion. Fair enough, but it's also like, okay, it's not... It's not the same length at all. Maybe that's just, you know, the main story acts. Like, that's how that's how it works in theatre, you know. You got Act 1, where you... Exposition, you set up a problem. Act 2, where things happen. And Act 3, where things all get resolved. And it turns out that things all get resolved in one fell swoop. So, uh... Optionally, for Act 2, you also have all these other side missions, which you can do. Uh, involving the other characters in the game. Uh, characters from the first act coming back, characters who are introduced in the second act, characters who are recurring from the first game as well. Just sure. Uh, I think one singular character, but it's something. Um, so I'm like, okay, they got all these, they do kind of encourage you to do them, and I'm not too sure what happens if you actually don't do them, but... Sure. Hey, at least they give you a health pack down here. I think you're not really supposed to fall down. You saw what I mean. It was like it was a bit of a weird jump. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, you're also going around. You're collecting things. I kind of put off fighting all the orcs until the end of the game because I was like, oh, like the orcs don't necessarily scale to your level, but you can only dominate and capture the orcs uh, at or below your level. So why would you do all that when like you're going to be struggling when you can just do the story missions? Oh my gosh, he's here! He cometh. I'm definitely shooting something. Oh, he's come give me a hug. He's giving he's give me a hug. He is give I'm jammed in the wall. <laughs> I'm <laughs> very stuck. I love this room. So this is that room. Oh, this is below. This is a different room. Yeah. Uh Yeah, I, I thought, like, oh, what's the point of me, like, caring too much about this orc system when I should really be, like, you know, rushing to do all the story things? They'll give me all this flat amount of experience. Whereas all the orc stuff, it's like, well, it's kind of dependent on my level. And also, I can't capture the orcs if they're not, you know, you know not my level. So what's the point? Uh, well, you get this key. So I'm going to call that a victory. Uh, I believe I'm above, yeah, I'm above this room now. This level seems, like, simple on the surface, because it's like, oh, okay, you go to that room, and then you go over here, and then it's like, okay, so that was that side path, which now I've completely ignored, and I'm hoping that there wasn't anything too important in there, but at least I know that I can go back there if I really want to. And we got a switch. And that's right, this is the second switch. <laughs> I haven't investigated what's happened after that. And now you hear, ooh, wonderful, wonderful hissing noises. Now, this is the important part. Not to, not to fall back down. You've got the one panther down the bottom there. The one that I never took out. Um, ugh. Just gotta frog it. And, uh, you'll notice that the sand is drained specifically right underneath me. So, uh, it's okay to slide down. Uh, but other than that, yeah, then I continue to the game, 
And then you got the Act 3, which is that final mission, and the game is done. But wait, in comes the epilogue. So this is why I say there's the fourth act of, or in my case, the third act, because the third act is actually too short, uh, called the Shadow War Wars. That was the level? Oh, yeah, that was the level. Ah, okay. Well, <laughs> that's good fun. <laughs> I forgot that's the level. Yeah. Oh, boy. This is going to be interesting, because I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm only going to do three levels of stream, because I'm going to do all the Egypt stuff, and now I'm like, yeah, no, this is going to be a horrendously short stream otherwise. I'll keep it going, i gotta find, I got to figure out something to do next week, though. Gotta have that music. Uh, so, this is relying on the fact that I picked up a key, didn't I? Nope. No. Who knows what happened to that key? Nothing screams Egypt like boxes everywhere. What horrors will I unleash? But, uh, yeah, then comes the Shadow Wars bit. The only goal of the Shadow Wars is to defend all the fortresses. And this was a bit of a weird one. There's four fortresses in the game. There are three waves that they require you to defend fortresses on. You defend one fort in one, one fort in phase two, and then three forts in phase three. So one of the forts gets saved twice. Uh, it's a little weird, but sure. And then the game just ends. Uh, it just kind of goes, yeah, that's it, basically. Uh, by that point in the game, I had nearly leveled up to unlocking every skill, um, or every, like, perk of the skills, because you can't even equip all of them. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 okay. So, uh, this room may have actually been visible from the center room, and I'm curious if you can see the center room back from here. All the Egypt levels kind of blur together because they are visible from the other levels. I guess this area is not visible from the other levels. But, uh, there's probably going to be a bit where it's like, oh, like, you'll see it, and then you'll be like, ah, okay, sure, cool. Um, other than that, I am perusing around, because I'm pretty sure there's an opening, and I'm not too sure uh, which one I came out of. I think I came out of this one, didn't I? Yeah, I did. Okay, well, let's get out of there before the crocodile decides to nibble on my toes. Yeah, okay. What do I open up in the other rooms? The cat. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the Shadow Wars part seems like it's a bit of a, you know, a game epilogue. Uh, they've given you more skill points. They expect you to just max out some skills and, you know, get all these orcs on your side and uh, ultimately, you know, take over. Take over everything. Uh, but... Uh, but the... I guess this is the interesting topic I wanted to bring up. I remember when the game came out and reviews of this game were uh, very mixed in the sense of you will hear some very positive things about the game and then you'll hear people go and then you get to the Shadow Wars chapter at the end of the game and everything grinds to a halt and you are forced to go and, you know, basically either grind forever or pay microtransactions. And now this is this is the interesting part. They so the game came out I think August 2017. Four months later, maybe it was later. Um, but sorry, six months later after the game came out, they removed the microtransactions and they spoke about rebalancing the uh, particularly that part of the game. Uh, and this is an interesting point I find. What I played was not what people played four years ago. I I am playing the redone, uh, everything's all spruce. Wow. When was the last time I saved? Uh, oh, cool. Cool. <laughs> um, so I'm playing this redone version of the game. It's, and it's, 
it's an interesting one because it's like it's not like you know it's not a secondly sold version this isn't uh deus ex human revolution director's cut this isn't hd remake this isn't uh you know dragon quest on the ds this isn't like you know some other release this is the release of the game the old microtransaction version is now a relic of the past it's something that people definitely wrote about and some people probably film them playing but you today will not be able to experience that microtransaction riddled mess that i heard about uh and instead you're playing this version where i legitimately and i'm not even joking i did this post game in four hours Whatever people were talking about grinding the heck out, I did in four hours. Uh, yeah. I, I, I don't have much to say about, like, that. Oh my gosh. This reminds me of a room in Hexen. You remember the bit with the, the Alvania had to hit, like, the seven switches and, like, there were two. Oh, these cats are strong. These cats are strong. So, yeah, so what I experienced was the moment I beat the regular Act 3 of the game, and then, you know, started continuing the game again, I was granted 10 additional skill points. Uh, I didn't necessarily level up 10 levels, so I couldn't capture orcs that were a stronger level than me. But I also felt like I was gaining experience levels quite quickly in that post game. I was able to, you know, some there were some captain missions, and those captain missions would give me twenty four thousand experience, and I only needed like sixty thousand, and eventually seventy thousand to get some of the later levels. So a handful of missions granted me, if, you know, an easy level up, and I was able to push my orcs a little further. So I ended the game, I think, around level sixty two. Um, the level only means just. It's, it's not really any hard stat-wise things, but of course the stronger the orcs, the better your gear also gets. Um, I didn't really find it too challenging after that. Like, I definitely got a bit iffy. You know, a lot of those, like, no-chance deaths were also just like, ah, oh, okay, sure. Um, I'm swimming around at the speed of sound. I'm uh, trying to look for... Oh my gosh. I hit... I tap X. Tap. Oh, square, sorry. PlayStation controls forgot. I'm playing this on PC, so it's not even PlayStation button prompts, but it's definitely... I've done the mapping, but I keep forgetting. What's what? Uh... Is there a... S I swear there was some... Ah, that's what I'm looking for. Just to keep... Oh my gosh, hi there. Hi there, Mr. Man, how you doing? He's, he's chilling. He's vibing. Um... Oh, hi. <laughs> This crocodile's not doing a good job, isn't he? He's just, he's just chilling. He's just sitting, sitting by. Um, but yeah, ultimately, uh, after a while, I defended the fort five times, and I just kind of went around and captured the the orcs. If my fort died, I uh, two of the out of out of the five defenses, I failed two of them the first go, and uh, that did mean that I had to uh, gather more troops, no. take out the new. Uh, what was that? No. Was that me saving next to the thing? I, I guess she's not going to use it again, but that, that was a bit weird. Uh, I love how this also opens up another room, like, in front of you, but obviously the uh, the secret is probably the... or the, the, the door that they showed is probably the, the more key thing. Um, yeah, I'm curious if this room is visible from the main like the center but yeah this is this is the main part of the egypt level that i was thinking of so anyways let's bring one of the boxes to jump up um yeah back to shadow war just for a moment um yeah it, it's it's an interesting one i guess this brings up a, a an interesting topic of uh, these games as a service service games um and even <laughs> i mean shadow of war is not really a games as a service game but it's still got, like, that element of, yes, it did have the microtransactions. You can feel their presence. Even if they're not available to buy, you can definitely feel, oh, okay, like, if I do online, uh, you know, conquest missions, I will gain these loot boxes, and the loot boxes will give me loot and give me, you know, items around my level. Uh, but I don't have to do it. And I actually chose to just ignore really doing any of the online stuff after a while. Um, ah, there's a mummy. <laughs> Get him! Get him! 
Whoa, he's about to kill me. <laughs> yeah, for those of you chiming in, uh, by the way, uh, yes, yeah, so just, 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 there's, there's mummies, there's demon mummies. Whoa. This guy decided to blow up. <laughs> the other one's just kind of like, you know, just, uh, jibbed. This guy was like, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, double A on that one. Uh... Okay, so I've got this bit with the bridges, but I can't do anything just here. I can walk over to this corner, but... I... Oh, there's a switch. Of course there is. Okay, so I've lowered one of these. Now this is... This is, yeah, all those items, all those, uh, kind of slots on the first level, this is where all the items are. And this is kind of interesting. I, I really like this concept of, like, how the... The levels kind of expand beyond just, you know, what the one level is. It's like, you know, you'll you'll do a level and then you'll go back to a previous part. But, it, I mean, it is a level, you know, it exists. But still, it's cool. I'm trying to think of a, an equivalent. Or it's like, you're kind of going back to old levels, but of course they're like different maps. Half-Life. Yeah, actually, yeah, never mind. Wait, hold on, this came out in 1996. They beat Half-Life to it. There's bound to be other, other, other games that did it. I'll say Super Metroid, how about that? <laughs> uh, so now I've got this one thing, and it pointed me towards a door in the hull. Door in the hull? Floor in the door in the hull. Ah, yeah. I was like, I knew there was a, a little hidey passage around here. Very sneakily hidden. But oh yeah, this is- Ah, cats! <laughs> oh my gosh, jeez. Uh, uh, okay, I'm good. I'm safe. We gotta try and hide on that corner. Well, they can't hide from me. Uh, but yeah, these- these games, and especially newer games, uh, this is an interesting, I guess, like, system of one, like, and, and I guess the devs spoke about this. They said, we wanted to kind of change these mechanics, aka <laughs> remove the microtransactions, to bring the game closer to our vision, because they said one problem with the microtransactions currently, uh, or at least when, when they were in, was that, uh, it kind of dissuaded players from participating in the, in the, uh, the trademarked um, Nemesis system. So, yeah, they said, okay, the mechanic we introduced detracts people from... Well, sorry, the design of all the mechanics brought people away from interacting with the systems in the way that we wanted. Now, that is fine. That's, that's a fine thing for people to want to, you know, want to bring. But it's also interesting of it comes at the cost of, you know, I guess the microtransactions, which in this case is probably a win for everyone. Uh, but, and, and honestly, I don't even know like who would feel my bad to spend money on this game. If that post game was like grindy as heck and took me like four times as long, I'd probably feel like I'd just give up at that point to be honest. So fair enough, actually good call. Um, but the, uh, I guess, like, yeah, changing a mechanic such that it, well, you know, it's something that people will never experience again. I think one example that I've played uh, from recent memory is uh, the game Overwatch, which granted, I mean, like, you know, Overwatch, I know, I know, I know, when's the sequel coming out? Uh, but that's, that's a bit of an interesting game because it didn't really, like, it's not just that they added to the game, but they have actively changed and removed uh, certain features and character, you know, play styles and stuff. The, I guess the classic is, uh, the character Symmetra, uh, had, she used to have, um, what she have as her e? Oh, hi there. Hey! <laughs> oh. I think I saved just, like, further down, climbing this. Oh, not even that much further. Well, kind of further, but... Still. Uh, I forgot what she even had as Rhi. 
That's the worst part. But her, um, her teleporter was her ultimate, and it had six uses, I believe. So people were able to teleport through it six times, and then it would break. And that teleporter would be from spawn, so they just pop down the teleporter, and it would mean that the team could get back quicker. And, uh... Her left click latched on to enemies. Uh, that's all I remember. Now they've changed it so that her teleporter is an ability that she has. Um, and her ultimate is now she makes a giant shield. But her left click, it's not like latching onto people. It's just kind of like, oh, it, she's got to aim it. Um, it's interesting where it's like this is a change in a mechanic. And people are now no longer going to experience what this mechanic was like. This isn't going to jump me. Okay. Uh, people are no longer going to experience this mechanic for what it originally was. People play Overwatch now, they're going to not, not know what this was. And there's no way to, I guess, play play back the game at that point. Uh, I guess a lot of multiplayer-only games do experience this. Uh, and even, I think, the perfect example is like an MMO. Because MMOs live and die off maintaining the features that people want to play with. And kind of deprecating the things that no one cares about. Uh... I do have the magnums, I'm gonna go with the magnums on this one. So the magnums are like harder pistols. Uh, again, they've got ammo, but... I don't know when I actually did pick up the magnums, but... Yeah, sure, there it is. There's the magnums. There's one more weapon in this game, and that's the Uzis. Uh, which I'll experience later. So there's another switch, uh, which we could jump down and get, but I think the... Main thing is to continue on going, because I guess once you've pulled all the switches... Uh, you're all good. You could just kind of jump between everything. Uh, yeah. So this was a bit interesting. I do remember there being a pit here. Um, I guess, yeah, we go down the pit. Ah, this room was burning my brain. I was thinking of it uh, in the grease pit. And then I guess, yeah, it's in here. There's nothing out here to kill me. Nothing at all. Uh, but yeah, just so to tie it back to Shadow of War, like, I guess all these people who played this game in 2017, if they were to play the game again, they would have a very different experience to that 2017 playthrough. And never mind also, I think, uh, well, actually, I'll, I'm going to complicate things with later, um, as well. But, uh, but yeah, like, I just, oh, my thumb's kind of aching because I've been holding that forward for a bit. Eh. <laughs> but, uh, the, um... Yeah, like, it's it's an interesting concept, I guess. I don't know, because I, I kind of like the idea of, you know, I, I do like the idea of preserving game history to some degree. And with retail copies of games, it's very easy to go, this was one iteration of the game, because that's the retail version of the game that came out at a certain point in time. Even games with patches, generally, you know, for at least some of these older games, people will find a way to play a game with certain patches. Um, I guess Doom's a perfect example, the OG Doom. Everyone always plays Ultimate Doom nowadays, but people definitely do have those updated revisions of Dooms, or the original versions of Dooms, of Doom. And, uh, you know, you'll find bugs and other things that are kind of curious, um, that are there. And I think that's kind of interesting, just like, you know, this era of games where you couldn't actively, like, patch them, but definitely you could you know, recall and give new versions of games and as long as they didn't have anything too horrendous, uh, horrendously breaking and everything would work out all hunky-dory. Uh, I guess that just opened the door, didn't it? Yeah, okay. I remember this room giving me absolutely, like, absolute nightmares because uh, it involves climbing. And, uh, not just climbing, but I think also something comes to kill you, so... Uh, I'm gonna try and drop down and we'll see... Oh, maybe not quite there. But I also remember it being a pain. There's nothing, nothing to kill me yet. Pretty sure something kills you as soon as you touch you. <laughs> Two mummies. Two mummies. Ah, 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 ah. Can't believe it. Can't believe it. 
So, but yeah, I I guess uh, yeah, Shadow War is just yeah, it's an interesting game just because uh, all the complaints that people had four years ago is not even that lo much longer of a time than really it can be. But it's like all those complaints. I think don't exist anymore, or at least aren't relevant to people who are playing the game now, because it's it's been patched, it's been, you know, fixed and updated. Uh, Cyberpunk, actually, any any game with, like, launch disasters, that's, I guess, one other thing, but, uh, but, like, specifically, like, mechanical changes like that, that's, that's a curious one. Um, now, I, I thought of another example, so I recently, I guess, like, a few weeks ago, I played through Bioshock Infinite. And I had played the game at launch, and I thought the 1999 mode was very, very difficult. I played it again, uh, just, you know, a month ago, and it was quite easy. Not tons easy, I definitely had some very tricky parts, and I was probably scraping by a bit, but... Um, but definitely, I didn't have any... I didn't struggle. I eventually got through areas, and I eventually could be able to work my way back up, because the game wasn't hard consistently the whole way through it's definitely you know some bits are a lot easier than others um but uh, inevitably i was like oh okay why is this a bit easier and i think the main reason is that when you start the game uh one of the dlcs that you have gives you a bunch of um it gives you a bunch of uh, items to begin with uh to boost your stats right off the bat um so you're basically getting like four of those, you know, health, shield, uh, salt upgrades right away. On top of that, you, you're given a few uh, perk abilities, which you can swap in and out for other ones later in the game. So uh, it's not exactly, you know, I think I'm actually shortcutting like a bit of the climbing by going over here. Mm, nah, that's too much of a drop, actually. I, I can't shortcut that. I think it's just here to get some shotgun ammo, but still. Still. Uh, but yeah, I, and I guess that's an interesting one as well, where it's like, DLC, I think I've played, like, a solid dozen games, where having DLC, or having, like, some extra mechanic, that, like, you're encouraged to, like, you know, experience and, and play, before you tackle on other parts of the game, I find sometimes ruin the experience like that. You're playing through one of these games and suddenly, you know, the pacing goes all weird. They introduce new mechanics, like, awkwardly close to the end of the game and it looks it looks very bizarre. It's like, I'm not... Well, if anything, I think that speaks to, like, something kind of terrifying with uh, modern game design taking too long and then suddenly, like, here is, like, a new mechanic because of DLC. And you're like, oh, okay. Um... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I already saw it. Dude, uh, okay, uh, Mr. Crip, it's, um, we had Australian, uh, daylight time. So, it's, uh, clocks of forward an hour. <laughs> for, uh, for, for the next six months. Until, uh, April, first Monday of April. Um, so. Hopefully, hopefully, uh, the start time isn't too off. Uh, yeah, um... Yeah, I found that, uh, yeah, this is what I mean by, like, you gotta, like, you gotta very perilously climb your way around this whole room. And you gotta do all these side skedaddlings. And if you drop, then you're just back at the beginning. And, uh, yeah, if you drop before you kill those guys, they're gonna pop out of these little hidey holes and ruin your day. Uh, so I'm gonna give myself a save here because I'm on a convenient platform and I'm pretty sure I've got to do a running jump yeah I gotta do a running jump there we go and where does this put you kind of underneath <laughs> pull the lever and there's another bridge so there's only one bridge to go so okay uh, I don't think that's explicitly a shortcut I think you just gotta chop down Climb your way back up. Bro, I'm a student every time before 17 is bad. Every time before 17? Ah, oh, dude, my condolences. I I definitely have, like... I, I, I found, like, once I started, like, working and just, like, the 9 to 5 routine, it's like, oh, man, like, I start missing out on, like, all these fun, like, group chats and stuff like that. Um, 
fortunately, uh, everyone who I watch ages just as fast as I do. So eventually, uh, eventually my time caught up with them. But until then, I think it points you at the, the bottom because it opens up after you've picked up all of these. Uh, so this is the one that I didn't pick up because it's over here. Uh, here we go again. So yeah, that, that's going to open up on the last one. I'm curious if I should have it open or not by now. Um, I guess the question is, where am I? I think actually, no. Okay. I was going to say like, oh, did they put a ledger? Um, I don't think you can quite make that jump. If you can, let's give it a go. Why not? I mean, it's exposed like that, so they... If you can't, then I'm just gonna, like, barely... Ah, yeah. Okay, cool. We are in Egypt. Oh, I could've just walked there. <laughs> Whoops. Okay. So this is a room I did go in. But I didn't climb the steps, did I? Yeah, nah, I didn't climb the steps. Should I be climbing the steps? That's another question. Uh, so, uh, so Mr. Crypt, the topic right now is, uh, I guess, like, games that change over time. And this is in the context of me playing Middle Earth Shadow of War, where I remember, um, uh, all these reviews came out, uh, of the game at the time. And they complained about the ending of the game being a grind fest and basically, you know, asking for you to buy the microtransactions. And then I played the game, and the microtransactions don't exist, and that ending of the game is something I beat in four hours. And I'm curious, I guess, like, experiences of games that can change very differently, depending on, I guess, just, like, when you witness them, when you experience them. Um, I think this is actually a ledge I can go down. Yeah. Here we go. So what did I change? I changed these to steps. Ooh. <laughs> Close. Uh, okay. Then I turn back around and I can tell exactly what's going to happen up here. <laughs> I hear the noise and I'm like, I don't know. Hi there. Hi there. Hi there. You gonna react? Oh, here it comes. Belgium said to EA to remove loot boxes from their games. The story is... Yeah, yeah. So, uh... I'm not too sure when all that legislation stuff started. It might have actually been 2017, actually. Um, and it's, it's weird as well with Shadow of War. Because the loot boxes are still there. But there's no, there's no way of purchasing them. The only way you get loot boxes is when you do an online... Uh, base mission, and it's a, it's an asynchronous online mission as well, so it's not even, like, really online. Uh, you do get a random assortment of items. Uh, but the Orcs already dropped a random assortment of items, so it's just kind of, like, a contextual showing of that. Uh, so there you go, that's the fourth bridge. Uh, and then, yeah, you open up this door, which leads you very conveniently back here. Where you can then slide down the slope again. Do you slide down the slope, or do you just... Yeah, I guess you do. I think you do. Oh, I guess it's not really much of a slope anymore, is it? There's a real interesting way how the um, how this level, like, snakes its way around. You've got the central room, and yet... You don't get too lost. You definitely take a fair bit of damage, though, I'll tell you that. That one is entirely... ...avoidable. Oh. Um... Yeah. So... And then, yeah, I, I kind of muddied the waters by saying, okay, so what about DLC? Because there's some games with DLC, and the DLC changes your experience as well. 
Uh, and there's some games out there, like I think Payday 2 is a perfect example, where I made a video, and I'm, I'm gonna admit to this one, I made a video on my YouTube channel talking about how I loved this, like, brutal nature of Payday 2. This idea of, like, you know, they've, they've taken... The original game had this kind of element of you're in an action movie. The, um, you know, it's, it's, it's got jamming music, it's, you know, all that stuff. And what Payday 2 did is that it toned it all down and started to go, uh, still arcadey in some aspects, but definitely more on the weighty and, uh, like, uh, I guess more realistic in a, like, very quotations... Uh, air quotes version because it's not it's not really a realistic game but you know what i mean it's like ch toning it back a little bit and going hey things are a bit more methodical things require more thinking and planning and and thought behind it and on top of that you are forced to play team by you know you have to carry bags um you've got uh i think you've, you've still got all the specials but you're just everything takes is like heavier one super my group caught covid and we're still walking to college oh geez man stay safe oh where's the oxygen i did not find the oxygen in time cool uh this was after i picked up the last one right because i should have four things in my inventory yeah or five things all right take two on swimming <laughs> maybe i should breathe for air breath for air denied oh man you you should you should be given the uh ability to be as uh safe from the the rona as you can But, uh, yeah, I don't really talk much about Rona because, uh, it's a bit sensitive for me on that one, so. It's not like you can upset me, but you know what I mean. That old shadow. Yeah. Nothing screams shadow like an octagon, you know? <laughs> That's a wonderful, like, shadow. It doesn't, it, like, it Z fights as well, it's the best part. I love how they put this like shotgun here or shotgun shells here like just to bait you into staying underwater just a little longer than you probably would have you don't you really don't have you just go up for air it's not like anyone can like sh throw things at you what's that oh it's a mummy <laughs> Are they actually mummies? I think they're mummies. Yeah. They're very lanky and weird, but I guess they're like the... And they blow up. But I guess they're just like the, you know, the, the murals on the wall here. Very long. This old monkey. It actually might be a monkey. Uh, can I climb up there? Or is that a bit too far? Oh, no, you can. Look at that, double magnums. Or is that double double magnums? Because there's two on the picture. So yeah, other than that, that's my main topic. Uh, I thought it's something interesting to bring up. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention what Payday 2 became. Uh, well, first of all, they introduced a uh, basically uh, loadouts for your skills, which means you can line up multiple skills, uh, like skill loadouts, and then just switch them per level, which. Or per day of the highs, which just kind of kind of ruins the point in my eyes, but sure, uh, I'll accept it. And then uh, lots of other things like um, yeah, this is uh, one of that grease monkeys you slot. They're all the grease monkeys, every single one of these, because there's so many of these mummies. Also, grease monkey. <laughs> yeah, this is what I mean. So suddenly, and this is what I love, we're back in the room from the very, from the first Egypt level. And they remembered where the box was pulled. I think that's absolutely amazing. That like somehow they, they programmed that in all correctly. Uh, but of course, 
Yes, so what we have to do is put in the correct objects into the correct slots, and obviously that is not that one, that is the scrab. Pop it in the slot. Aha, uh -huh, that is a door. Here we go, another slot. Stick everything in. But yeah, no, it's a fun, it's a fun bit of level design. I actually, I, I think that's pretty neat. I think they load the whole level at the start and then only load an objects when entering a checkpoint. In this game, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it's actually the whole level is like physically there, um, all in. Uh, it probably does a good job of not rendering things, uh, outside of the, um, the fog view. Because, yeah, you can see there's a fog view, so... I assume it's like, okay, if something is out of the fog, then... Uh, I mean, enemies can exist out of the fog as well. So I think the enemies actually do exist all the time. Anyways, through that, you can continue to the third and the final level of Egypt. I know, it's only three levels, and... I, uh... Yeah, I didn't plan to kind of whip through these levels that quick, so I'll probably play the, the next Atlantis level. I've got, um, one kind of intention as well, and that's, uh, for the, um, uh, I spoiled the next area, didn't I? <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> for the, uh, um, I did want to play the Unfinished Business expansion. Um, but I also feel like that's probably just going to take me, like, a flat, like, two hours. No. We'll see how it goes. Um, I've got it all lined up, so it's not going to take any effort. Ah, uh, oh, now we get fleshy ones again. Just give me, give me lots of hugs. And they close the door behind me, just to be nice. Oh my gosh. Keep doing laps if he wants. Sure. Sure, I guess. <laughs> cool that one Peru level is uh, green. What we have in the other part of the game is Sony Monkey. Exactly. It's just monkey all over. I think there's a... Actually, yeah, yeah, this is a bit of a brown game. There's not a lot of... Not a lot of color in this game. It's definitely uh, on the brown side. Um... Yeah, I, I, I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, but yeah, like me with the, the orange, the Halloween orange, unintentionally, I think has also meant that the uh, screen is just constantly brown right now. Uh, so I love this bit. We've got a giant sphinx that we just walked out the back of. Uh, and... One, you hear like ocean sounds or sand sounds? I don't know what I'm hearing here, but... The Sphinx is kind of interesting. It's just big. And there's a lot of, like, these ledges. This is... This is actually, like, probably the... Annoying... <laughs> the original VTuber. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't think that ledge is for me. Yeah, no, nah, that ledge is bound to be... Accessible the other way. Oh well. Uh, so I can definitely feel that the way to go is to climb up here. Maybe I'll be on the higher ledge. Um, yeah. Uh, other games I played during the week. I finally finished Picross 3 Yes, I remembered. Oh, sorry, Picross 3D. And uh, again... Just, I've played it before, don't worry. I love how this is the ceiling as well. It's just like, yeah, okay, cool. You gotta find this mystical ankh and put it in there. Uh, yes, origin of every VTuber knife scream around the corner. Yeah, there's two, two ankhs to put in. You can see there's all this platforming over on the side. Uh, I believe you fall through the face. So you probably don't want to fall through the face. In fact, I don't even think, yeah, I guess I probably don't have a reason to be up here. I'm trying to pinpoint where it wants me to start climbing up this guy. 
because there's definitely a lot of ledges, but nothing hurts with a bit of investigation. And a bit of slip sliding. It's definitely a massive room, and I think that this idea of, uh... Oh, oh lordy, oh lordy! Oh yeah, I forgot. Okay, this guy is not doing a great job. He's shooting at the wall. I'm in this perfect angle. But yeah, some of these like weird fleshy monsters like, you know, have a Metroid like, or have a Samus Aran hand cannon going on. Uh, this guy, yeah, he just kept hitting the wall. So not the smartest tool of the shed, but this looks like an area to start climbing. Good old music kicking in as well. Always great. Always good fun. But yeah, I, I think one thing that I love about this game is its rudimentary, like, 3D-ness. That would catch out anyone who just runs around the corner. But you know what I mean? It's like, it does a classic thing of, like, this menu, like, draws the screen to a texture and then just flat backgrounds. Uh, the fog being so awfully close, the wobbliness of all the textures, the, like, there's so much about this game that's like, it's very early 3D, and yet it's very admi admirable, I find, of like, what they did achieve. Because this is, uh, a, you know, to some degree, a truly 3D platformer. And not just, oh, it's a platformer that isn't 3D. It's like, this is a game that does rely on there being a hard camera perspective. And that, I think, is really important. Because even a game like Mario 64, I think, feels like it's a string of platforms that doesn't necessarily play on the fact that you can't see all the platforms. Also, hi. Hi. How you doing? There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> yeah, just, 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 just a... Uh, it's not a dragon, but you know what I mean. I forgot where that door opened. I think it was up on a ledge, and I think it's around here. Actually, maybe it's on the ground. It's definitely not underneath there. That's, that's I think, what opens up at the very end. Uh... Couldn't have been around this side. This is how you actually climb back up as well. Play that music again, just in case. Uh, yeah, it must have been up climbing. Now this is a very like raw, just rock climbing section. Uh, another game I played, I finally beat the first of the three Phoenix Wright games in the trilogy that's on Steam. I really enjoyed it. I definitely recommend it. Um, still kind of surprised how visual novel-y the game is, actually, but I'm also kind of glad that it's like, it is, like, fun engaging, and that's, I think, probably the best thing. Also, it's surprisingly long, and I think that's also another great thing about, like, if a visual novel is done right, it should last you a fair bit of time. Uh, yeah, Lara's cool climbing over this, I don't know. It's, it's not too bad, it's just, you know, it's just no pixels, no, no width. Just keep gripping across it, it's all cool. Uh, but no, yeah, that, that game's been good fun, uh, I think that's mostly it for the main ones. I can't think of anything too too much else. Uh, now this is where it gets kind of perilous, because yeah, if you go in, if you're sliding down this the wrong way, there's no recovery. Yeah, so like, I'm facing this way, and it's like, yeah, no. And this is what I mean by like, uh, the game gets brutal. Because now it's like, now they're giving you like, no chance. If you slip, you're, you're done. You're done, skeets. No falling into water, no like, oh, the, you know, the jump isn't that high up. It's like, nah. Oh, okay, I thought I, I don't know why I thought this was gonna slide forward. 
Oh yeah, another switch. Another door. I jumped very quick afterwards. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is where it fun continues, doesn't it? Oh, you hear that noise? Hi there. Ah! Yep, okay, cool. I think he's already coming for me. I'm pulling out the magnums. Have at him. He's all the way over there. He can't do anything. Get him. <laughs> I just love the way they all explode. I don't think that there's any enemy in, like, any other Tomb Raider that just comedically explodes into giblets. That didn't happen. That didn't, you didn't see that. <laughs> Complete fabrication. Oh. Alright. Here we go. Dude, this Sphinx has a massive chin beard right there. Ah, oh, that's what I get for not walking up to the ledge and then stepping back. That's what I get for just trying to step back. It's tricky when you're on a diagonal, but that wasn't a diagonal over there. Oh my gosh. Wow. Ah, oh, gosh. The last bit of Egypt. They didn't say it was gonna be easy, did they? <laughs> Give it a leap. And this is just a casual way to slide down. Kinda looks like it. Yeah, I think it is just a way to slide down. Uh Yeah, yeah, slide down, will ya? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here is me still not saving. Uh, I think it, it detected me holding down a bit. I, I am now making mistakes, like it's nobody's business. Yeah, that turn. That was a bit of a strange turn. Ah. <sighs> okay, okay. Pace it. Pace it. Don't, don't ruin it. Don't bore everyone's time. Or waste everyone's attention. I got a game to beat. Looks like I gotta jump. Bit of a narrow jump, but yeah, I mean, I'm on the edge now. Which means I can jump around and climb up to a magical door that is sitting up here. Finally! You've seen enough of this room from around the outside. Time to get out of this room. flip over the other side. There we go. Push the box. <laughs> Pull that up. Here we go. Ah! 
the centaurs again. Remember, they can shoot. Maybe. They might know how to shoot. They might know how to shoot. <laughs> Maybe? Hi there. <laughs> can they go kaboom? Oh, that, that's up for you to decide. He's got a bit of health. He's definitely got a bit of health. Oh! Well, they, they can make me go kaboom. Ah. I'm definitely hitting him. Alright, now his butt's visible. There you go. There you go. He can go kaboom. And congrats. That is... One piece. Uh, I assume because there were two doors, there's another door somewhere that's hiding that second piece. Uh, question is, where was that door? Well, time to slide down. That's a great sound, isn't it? I think my stomach's going off. Oh, hi there. <laughs> oh. yeah, okay. Let's <laughs> see where this is going. Did I get him? Maybe. Maybe I did. Cool. <laughs> Alright. Uh... Yeah, where was that door? Oh, is it just down here? Ah, okay. Yeah, it totally was. It's a bit of a leap, not gonna lie. Yeet! Did I... Hold on. Did I really just do that? Wow! I apologize profusely for not saving that long. And then actively, actively loading a save. That one's, oh, brain fighting to the max. Brain fighting to the max. Nice. Nice. I was like, oh no, I took damage. I better, I better, better load a save. And then, oh. The worst part is that, like, at least it's not tricky, but it did, like, this guy did take a bit of a beating. Like, he did take his time to, to take the hits. So... Hopefully, he doesn't take anywhere near as long. Maybe we should just go in with the magnums. Just show you how the magnums do it. Or the shotgun. Maybe I should use the shotgun. Because I start relying on the magnums too much. Okay. I'm, I'm showing him who's boss. You know what I'm curious about? If this level doesn't take me that much longer, I wonder... If maybe I should just go ahead and finish the game in one stream. It's possible. Zawardo. <laughs> it did. I'm coming in. You don't get that much shotgun ammo anyway. This is how you're supposed to take him. Just <laughs> well, that was definitely a lot quicker than the first time, wasn't it? I guess that's the rule of the game. Don't be afraid to burn your ammo. Unless the enemies really suck, in which case, yeah, okay, be afraid. Be very afraid. But... <laughs> Kabooey! <laughs> okay, first of all, hey! Hey, check this out! I'm saving! Yay! Gosh, my, <laughs> my mouth is parched, but I know that since there's gonna be a cutscene, and I know the cutscene off the top of my head. Oh, hi there. Ah, <laughs> it's got me in the collateral. So, I'm probably going to grab some water during a certain cutscene. Is, is there a, an easy way to get down, or is it just... Drop down the other side and run around. I'm going to drop down the other side and run around. Because you got to climb up to... 
Ah, uh, the worst part is I feel like speedrunning order. Actually, no, you can climb up the, the middle of the swing, sir. Yeah. Like, you don't have to climb all the way around just to get to the back. Hopefully. Yeah, I thought the explosions did hurt you. But, I guess not. Ah, oh, this, this jump. This jump and a half. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you jump down, and then you go, oh, oh. <laughs> they pull a, a, a meme on you where it's like you can see the ledge right there. Um, yeah, I should save. Yeah. Good call. That'll be the rule. If you think I should save, just say save. I will, I will probably save on you. It's not like immediate death that, that bit, but... Alright, so the trick is, take the slide backwards. Then you can grab the ledge and see that it's jutting out and there's one bit allowing you to continue on there and be able to climb... Or get some magnum ammo, first of all. They really want you to have some magnum ammo, don't they? She climb up. She continue climbing up. Smart, exactly. And then, obviously, up is the way to go. You can see the wall slopes down again. This one! Now, this is the one I was thinking. I was thinking... Because they do it twice. It's back-to-back, -back, like, slide jumps. Uh, this one, you gotta jump at uh, maybe the last moment and hopefully you grab the ledge. And if you don't grab the ledge, it's quicker to load a save than to really just walk around and try again. There you go. You, ju you just gotta... you gotta be careful. You need a key. You need a key. That's, that's no. the arc. Where's the... Where's the key? Oh, they put the key at the bottom of me. Oh. They put the key at the bottom. Second time, such <laughs> There you go, pop the key in. Stick her in there. And the door opens behind to reveal another one of the centaurs. I'm coming at him. At least it makes a legit horse noise, you know? The worst part of a centaur is when it doesn't sound like a horse. Centaurs are... <laughs> I love how I'm talking about the, uh, like, you know, the Egyptian, like, oh, you know, hybrid animals. And then it's like, yeah, the centaur is like a classic of just, like, horseman. Whole game is adult magazine advertisement, if you know what I mean. Dude, yeah. That's a, that's a freaking... Robbie Williams, naked man, right there. That's a skinless man. Skinless... Uh... You know, you know what I mean. Inside out man, that's the one. Where he's on the swing and then he turns inside out. Okay, so, I'm going to pull out the pistols first. So, that is both honks, which means, now, to safely put them back into the... Back? <laughs> to put them into the, uh, the Sphinx. So I believe that is, you can climb up to the back on the other arm. He does have a, a chip off the old shoulder, you know? You don't get it, I think that's good. 
Uh, I have not yet lost my innocence, so I'm feeling good about not losing it again. <laughs> I definitely, I, I mean, granted, and, and this is a thing as well, like, the game does have very kind of sexually provocative advertising material. They didn't even text you the inside of that. Wow. But, like, I think people have seen the, uh, you know, like, the shirtless Lara. Uh, <laughs> picks out, they're out there. It's official advertising. You can blame Idos on that one. Or was it core design? You really wanted her to be a sexy icon. It's weird as well, because it's like, she's definitely, like, like, uh, I guess, petite? Well, she's not, she's not sure, but, like, you know. <laughs> she fit, like, a... Like a two cent piece between her hips, like that's how narrow they are. And of course the triangular breasts, like straight up there. Um, but, uh, you know what I mean, it's like... I don't think she's like overtly sexualizing this. It seems like, you know, that's the that's the Tomb Raiding gear. That's what you do. I think they were, they were really sensitive to the game. Yeah, I mean, at the time, and honestly, I don't think this game was really, like, risque. Um, I might ask the... Oh, have I made a fatal mistake? I'm just gonna... Drop down, and we should be okay. Yeah, okay. So, the opening's on the other side. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess, like, that's the same reason with uh, Doom right now. Where it's like, Doom was, you know terrifyingly, like, violent and all that stuff. And now, it's got an, like, a flat M rating in Australia, which is like a T rating. Because it's just like, oh, it looks so crude. It's obviously not, like, you know, legit in any way. It's, it's a real, like, crude looking game. So I think people will probably look at this game and go, like, oh yeah, video game, sure. I think you can maybe be a bit brutal with, like, older games. There's definitely some spooky ones out there. Demo Night TF2? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Drop down, and more water. I feel like this is a very interesting way that they end the level, as well. Where it's like, you've got this, like, pit of water. By the way, there's been a lot of water in this, uh... In this, uh, Egypt area, hasn't there? You'd always imagine Egypt. Not a lot of water. But nah, plenty. We found the demo night in TF uh, TF2 and Dubaton. Oh, okay. Uh, I forgot which one is the one, but I'm gonna... Yeah, okay. Pull a lever. And the door opens up. Sailing you to the top, sucking you up to the top. Where you can then breathe. Breathe easy, knowing that you're <laughs> greeted with more platforms. Uh, it's not a blind stream unless he sneezes. Uh. <laughs> That's definitely the jump, but... It did not open up. Well, save. Uh. You and your responsible saving. Can't believe it. I can't believe it. <laughs> ah, it's all good. Alright. There you go. Second try is the time. Oh! Hi! Oh, he's gone somewhere. Hello! Ah, uh, yeah, I guess. See what's not physical right there. Uh, I, I have lost one tenth, but I also feel like it's the end of the level coming up. Now this is how you lose more than one tenth. <laughs> I wonder if so. <laughs> I wonder if someone uh, hates uh, or like. I should do a poll afterwards and be like, how much save scummy do you think I did? How much is too much? I, like, I want to shoot him. 
I'll just like sit next to you and then like leap at you as well. Hey! Oh, okay, I'm good. I'm cool. I'm cool. Eh, 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 eh. Oh, I did get hit by the explosion then. Okay. Ah. Uh, I don't know if this is necessarily the ledge I want to be on. I think over there is better, so. That looks a bit precarious. I said. You, uh, you did. You did. Okay. Uh, I have completely forgotten what I'm like really aiming for up here. I know you end up on top of these and I'm like, now what? <laughs> There's definitely like a ledge down there, but I don't know if that's... Maybe you do. But you do take damage, and also they didn't texture the back of that. <laughs> yeah, you do. You do. Nah, because this is just back where I started. So you do that, and now you've got the door open. And I don't believe there's anything on the other side, but you can... Because you can't... Oh... Okay, so I believe now is that the gap? That's not the gap between them. There's no gap between them. Is that the gap on the other one? Yeah, there we go. Look at that, a long corridor. You know, actually, you know one thing? Uh, who on the sand we can see box textures? Oh, exactly. One thing I actually... Tomb Raider 3 has... A, all the P PlayStation Tomb Raiders have save crystals. So those set save points throughout the levels. Uh, or at least things that you pick up. In Tomb Raider 3, this is an interesting one. Because the save mechanic is still quick saving on PC, they've kept in the save crystals, but they just give you health. But it's kind of weird because it's like, oh, it gives you health. And the, they don't on the PlayStation version. I think. Oh my gosh. Who likes turning right? I do. You know exactly what weapon we're intended to be using. I think he actually should be burning all your ammo anyways. And all this way, just to pick up the one scarab boy right at the beginning of the level. I know, right? <laughs> Hi everyone, how's it going? <laughs> Whoa. I'm burning them all. I'm burning them all. Alright, one down. Alright, we're going for the small health. <laughs> Just oof, oof, oof. Alright, he's dancing around me. He can't hit me. Okay, he can't hit me. My health like nearly disappeared just in one fell swoop. Ooh. Ooh. That's a bit terrifying. Well, the scarab goes right here, so at least it was right at the beginning, but that is a new scream right there. Good thing they give you more health. Uh, ooh. And then a gap in there. That's <laughs> I'm sure. They want you to just climb in. I still got a pain in my brain from you. And it's telling me funny ideas now, like to shoot you to hell. Look at this guy, it's the guy from the first area. And he's dead. <laughs> Listen, he, he's not a fleshy centaur. He can't take it as well. Alright, uh, during this cutscene. I'm going to grab a bottle of water. So hopefully I'm not going to kill any pacing. <gasps> you just pulled the tough end of a wishbone. Howdy. Afternoon. 
Left Larson sucking wind then, eh? If that is the phrase. Well, your little vacation riot's over now. Time to give back what you've hijacked off me. Let's try the lunchbox. <laughs> well, that was a quick grab of a bottle of water. I thought that was going to take my time. Oof. So, yep, all of our efforts are kind of in vain, but that's okay. Well, kill her! Hey! Hey! They're not very good bad guys, are they? You morons! They're also not very good at aiming, but... Oh well. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, granted, like, you know, Nightlore is intended to be, like, just... I was gonna say the femme fatale, but it's like, that's not the role. She's like, the brain's behind everything. I love this bike scene as well, because it's just like, oh, okay. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's hinting at things that they wanted to do for future Tomb Raiders, but yeah. No, uh, no riding on a bike in this game, at least. Gonna have to wait until... Definitely Tomb Raider Legend. I know 2's got, uh, some vehicles, but... Why no one can kill the main hero? Uh, okay. Dude, I, I love this, like, perfect setup as well. It's like, she found a working bike out in the middle of Egypt, and there's a wonderful ramp that's just about to go onto their boat as they sail past. And they don't notice her. What the heck was that? What? That away. Probably just a fish. Just a fish? Just a fish, kid. Man, you have got to learn to chill. I'm going back inside. And then just like real bonus points. She hides in here, takes a nap, and wakes up and they never found her. Well, that's because she's not in Egypt anymore. So I believe, as this is referred to, this is the uh, beginning of uh, the Atlantis portion of the game. Which I think is uh, actually kind of interesting. But it's not quite, it's not quite Atlantis yet. This is her, her mines, the Natla mines. And we'll just say it's, it's an Atlantis, so who cares. Uh, the scene in Egypt did not look like Egypt. Oh, maybe fair enough. Alright, so, as the Netless Mines level, uh, there's a couple of points, but I think the first thing is to continue walking on, and hopefully, I'll see. Oh, yeah, Lara's lost all the stuff, because they've taken all the stuff, so. Uh, you do get. To keep at least a handful of ammo. Uh, I don't remember picking up any Uzi clips, but at least your med kits and your. Well, your med kits are still there. Which I think is probably the most important part. We've got a thingy there, so I can't continue on. And I love how it's like, ah, there's a box back here. Crafty. Oh. Hopefully you enjoy bottle of water sound effects. Egypt did not look like Earth 500 million years ago. True, true, actually, that's just... Oh, they baited you. They baited you. They're like, oh, it's just behind the box. And then proceed to have nothing behind the box. Cool. Very cool. Way cool, even. Uh, I know that there's a thing around here, but I just didn't realize that they were gonna do it right up. Actually, is it? Maybe not. So you got a boat here. Uh, maybe there's something in the water. I don't remember there being anything, like, back after the start. So...
Maybe there is. Ah, yeah, that definitely looks like something back there. I'm gonna return to this place. Uh, is not it. Um, we're definitely, like, there's a bit of backtracking in this level, just very specifically at the level. Um, oh my gosh. I've been double bored. That, that's what I thought. I was like, I don't remember that, like, being... Ah, oh, I was... I didn't remember climbing up here at the beginning of the level. Alright, so that is the bottom one. That is the first one that I saw. Then you gotta wander all the way back. Climb up. And wander all the way back. The sound. Just wonderful cave noises. I'm not even too sure, like, what those noises exactly are. I, I love how, like... Yeah. By the way, level designer just wastes my time. <laughs> Nothing stops him from not having that hole and not having a, a tour in front of that, uh, that bit up the top. Instead, they just require you to wander in one place, open a door. That's a, that's a classic. I don't like it. <laughs> If you're gonna do that, at least do some world building or something, but... Maybe I have to introduce that drill, because that is important to the level design. Angry Donald Duck sounds... <laughs> random underwater level in one Tomb Raider. <laughs> That's my Donald Duck impression, apparently. Feels good seeing man- I was gonna say the Egyptians are man-made, but you know what I mean, like, like, you know, construction signs, rather than just like, everything is a pit, everything is a jump. Ah, okay. So, what they're looking at here is that there's a little raised room there. It's like a little worksman's room. Uh, you can enter the room, but you'll note that there's three panels on yeah. the back, and Lara just immediately just disagrees with you on that one. So, your goal is you need three... Uh, fuses? I think they're fuses. It's your main goal for this level. There's definitely a few areas to look at. Um, I believe this is a box I can move, isn't it? Yeah. For a Sonic Duration, I would say jump in this hole to die. The, the Rayman 2, like, piranha icon right in front of, uh, obviously jumping piranhas is my favorite. Uh, I was okay with pulling this in front of the tires. You can see that there's a little hidey hole over there, so that'll inevitably be where I want to go, but... Climb up onto this building. <laughs> you just casually drop down. This is obviously what that building looks like. But in here is a wonderful switch. Which pulls the boat back. And that's alright, because that reveals uh, a an area for later. I think. I mean, I know it's for later, I just... Oh, and that drops out the top here. Okay, maybe it is actually for now. Who knows? Because I know that there's a, another room over here. I guess actually you don't need the box to climb up here. You can just <laughs> climb on top. This one does not have a killer hole though, so it's their loss. A uh, couple of pathways. This one opens up when you want it to. That's magic. That's magic right there. Almost beat Genshin and female oof sounds. Does Genshin have a lot of oof sounds? I heard something rolling and I don't know what it was. That one's rolling. Oh yeah. 
forgot. Yeah. So I believe that rolls to the end and... Wait. No, it wasn't this one, was it? I know one of these rolls to the end. And you have to un... You have to <laughs> re-enter the room, which undoes the boulder. And you have to beat the boulder to the end. But I don't think that's actually the room, because... I'm going up to where the boulder started. But that looks like it's about to drop me down, actually. So... Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. Hmm. Alright. Not as ideal. I, I, I doubled, I double took. I did not realize the opening opened right there. So I was like... The top boulder doesn't move until you... Here. So if anything, you actually get yourself a bit of time to take a breather. There you go. There's fuse number one. What's it doing back here? I don't- Oh! I should've saved. Well, climbing yes, Genshin has- Oh, true, Genshin does have a lot of noises. We dying here. There we are. That's okay. Look at that, first try. Didn't happen. Didn't happen at all. <laughs> yeah. Alright, what am I looking at here? Boulder. Second boulder. There you go. Pro dodge. Pro dodge. Angry boulder the sounds. Exactly. Uh, all of that is just so that you're able to get back out. Not by the door you came in. No, no. Young little Timmy. You don't come back via the way you came in. You come back up via the... You know, the, the boulder area that I was in anyways. Yeah, I might as well just finish this game. Just have it later. Because I'm thinking like, well, I'm probably going to finish this game in like... Well, for this, this level by 10.30, and I was like, I'll oh, just... Just see how I keep going. Which makes me realize I took way too long in the grease parts. Alright, I believe this is the... Actually, I don't know if I can get this one speedrun time. Uh, maybe not speedrun. I don't know what the, the speedrun time on this game is. It's not that short. Because you can't, like, cheese... Alright, so the fuse is there. I believe you gotta do something or other, but... It doesn't seem like that door is opening. Maybe it opens in this direction? No. Not particularly. <laughs> ah, just... I'm just like trying to take some drink of the water. A chow name from Sonic. Maybe come back here later. Given that there's three fuses, and I know that this is only the second of them, it was definitely, definitely Lily. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my brain is losing its cells by the second. Um, there's definitely uh, something for later. Uh, there's. There's been an unlocking over here with the boat move. Uh, there's a new passageway open. So... Here's a move that I, I feel like I haven't done. Just on stream, but it's something kind of interesting. If you're holding down the walk button and then you do a jump forward, Lyra does a swan dive, which actually goes like... A very specific distance forward. This is not particularly a, like, a hot spot to use it until a, a much later point in the game. There's one jump 
Ah, this jump is actually coming in. Unless you get wait, can you just climb onto the butt? You can. Uh, there's one very particular jump, which you'll you'll see me use it on. You'll be like, ah, okay, sure. Where's the speedrun tag on, on the stream? Oh, no, yeah, you're right. Uh, I love this as well, because it's just like... This is like 90s level design in a nutshell. Have you ever seen the game Armadillo for the 3DO? This is that. I have one of... I am one of like four people alive who are aware of what Armadillo is. It's a incredibly like psychedelic, just like... China Nasaclone, Natla, oh yeah. Uh, you gotta pull out both of these boxes as well, so make sure you pop one in that spot. Uh, whoops. It's kind of interesting that this game, like, revolves around, like, Natla, the, uh, you know, just, you know, there's the person here who asks you to go look for them and then you raid into their office and then they got their goons coming after you right away, which I think is kind of interesting. You think they'd expect it to at least get all three pieces before they ambush her. But, nope. <laughs> well, you can tell where we're going next. Maybe that's why they show you, they force you to walk past that so that you see that that is where that item is. Where that, uh, little, little concrete mixer is. RH75, what does that stand for? Really high powered, 75. There's no P in there. Uh, do I need to push the box one more? No, I'm good. So I love like this area where it's like you can walk on, but why would you? When you got this wonderful little hidey hole up here. That opens. That's the door next to the uh, next to the conveyor belt. Yeah. So. Ah, this is yeah. Ooh. Yeah, actually, this is a bit interesting. I'm trying to remember. Uh. I think you just grab the fuse and then go, yeah, yeah, okay. So you grab the fuse and then immediately, ain't nothing personal. Yeah, so this guy comes after you. So you're supposed to realize you're not supposed to go this way. Kind of. Yeah. I don't know. It's a bit weird. They don't, they don't signpost this at all. I was like, I, I remember feeling that, but I didn't really remember it explicitly. But yeah, so the guy comes up to you and starts shooting it and because... You don't have your weapons, you gotta bail. But, you've activated the switch for where the, the fuse, or where the conveyor belt room is, for the other fuse, and then that's fuse number two. So, I think the tricky thing is that they don't tell you that your pistols are in that other spot. Um, like, uh, where the three fuses go. Uh, interestingly though, I've actually been the, the level uh, in the past without, like, you can run past that guy and spam health kits, and you will make it to the end of the level without your pistols, and you just get given them at the beginning of the next level, because you can't. <laughs> you need your pistols. Um, so it does save a little bit of time, because they're all in there. Let's show you that again, just in case. But, hey, might as well do it legit, you know. Ugh. 
Stumpy Jumpy Lara. Alright. So now you're in the this room. Pull a switch. Wonderful noises. You can see the conveyor is moving. And <laughs> there it had spit out the, the fuse. So there you go. So I guess the nice thing is that you can rule out this whole area after a bit. It's not the longest level, I don't believe. But it does keep on going a bit. Uh, and also, it's easy to get lost. It's definitely a bit easy to get lost, but that's okay. So, back to this room. Put all three fuses in. And you can see the, yeah, the, the room is lowering bit by bit when you put in one fuse at a time. Uh, that is obviously not how circuitry is working, but, you know, <laughs> I'll accept it. I'll accept it for the sake of the game. Anyways, the, uh, the room crashes into the ground. Why not, you know? And, uh, inside the room is the elusive pistols. They are finally back. You have to equip them. She doesn't, she doesn't have them out. So now, at least you got a fighting chance against the guy. Uh, but room grounded, exactly. Uh, I think I might need to eventually fix the chat, but we'll see how it goes. On top of that, we've got a little, little hidey hole up here. I just see a slope and I'm like, oh. There you go. Nice little convenient way to just really signpost that you're just supposed to come back. <laughs> Even though you could just leave the normal way, which you had in the past. We made this dungeon. I don't know, man. This is a mine as well. This is their design, technically. They have dug all this out, and yet it's full of OHS, like, Violations. There's just, you know, there's barriers everywhere, there's boxes everywhere, there's machinery that's just powered, there's things that could. Oh, hi there. I can't exactly run from him. He could probably hit me from here, can't he? Can't get me when I just run past you. He's still there, he's still gone. And now he's gone. No, oh, he's still there. Get him, get him. Ugh. And he drops the Magnum pistols. He is very thick. So if you need the Magnum, so well, there you go. And as long as that, also a lot of ammo. I Maybe that's all my ammo. Uh, Lava River. Uh, again, their mines, not mine. Mine, mine. Um, like, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what's with all these dead ends? Like, you built the tracks. Why are your tracks going to a dead end? Whose idea was that? Uh, I'm trying to figure out what was, what is the intended way to cross this gap? Because that's definitely too far a jump. And I know you want to end up there. Mine from Minecraft, yeah, maybe. You can see where Minecraft got the, the influence. Sup, Bradso, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. I am currently in a mine shaft. Is this pit? It's just, <laughs> it's just pit to lava. Why not? Uh, I know you can drop down, but I don't really know how you can get back up from there. Yeah, 
I guess you gotta go down. You gotta go down to go back up. Okay, so this... This is a real precarious drop, I think, because you can see that there's a ledge. There's a ledge halfway down, and I've got to be able to grab that ledge. So... I, I always botch this one up, even though it's literally... Yeah, no, never mind. Because if Lara falls too far, she stops wanting to grab onto things. So, um, in that case, that's not quite the ledge. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That is ex that is exactly what's true. Oh, maybe just, just here. Right where the guy died. He's telling me it was signposted the whole time that actually you're supposed to drop down here. Okay. And now... Yeah, now this is the part. <laughs> yep. So it's just like, ooh. Ooh. Very, very precarious. And now, just got a side skedaddle. All the way across to the other side. I think you're safe. At least they've made the ground a different color where you can stand. They've consistently done that, and that's a that's a good game design trait. Whereas, like, you play like Mario 64. I I get to rip onto Mario 64 twice today. I love that game, but it's like, yeah, if there's one thing that Mario 64 does, it doesn't make it quite clear what you slide on and what you stand on. Like the slopes at the edges of levels just kind of are there. Okay, now. Oh. Yeah, okay, so you gotta jump in that direction. Uh, that's... is that running jump? No, that's... you can do that with a standing jump. Uh, no, that's a running jump. <laughs> that's a running jump. Alright. Uh, that's not quite the ledge I think they intended for me to grab onto, but... You, you take what you can get... oh, whoops. Okay. I love this, that, like, volcano texture of the rock. Like, the, it looks very out of place. I don't know. There we go. Yeah, this is what I was feeling. So now you run up the back, only to then slide back down even further. Haha, <laughs> you thought you were gonna hit a switch today. Uh, what is to the left? Just, just, just the room, why not? Okay, so we got, you know, the spitting lava, why not? That's classic 90s, you know, 3D, just, ah yes, projectiles, sorry, projectile, particle spam. And yes, it does hurt. Why wouldn't it? I love this room as well, because it's just like... Full of all these wonderful precarious platforming like hazards all over the place. Okay, and now this is my favorite part. It's like if you jump onto the right platform, no doubt it's the uh the rocky texture, that just slides you back down. <laughs> like you're just dead if you attempt over there. Uh now, oh it keeps going, it keeps going. This lava. Okay, now we've got some TNT. I don't know that cooperation, but sure. And then you can see there's a bit of a bit of a barrier of entry. Uh, I think there's also there is a room up there, but you can't quite reach it. So. But you'll see that, ah yes, one of these TNT boxes just looks a little different, and that's because you can pull it. Twist it. Bop it. So, it's gonna take a bit of pulling. But that's okay. As, uh, as, as the beginning of The Incredibles, uh, I've got time. Time is on my side, I guess. So we pull the boxes. Well, one box, I guess. 
Uh, but yeah, I I do like this ending of the game. I think that out of all the the game, like once you're at these last three levels, there's such a of like a great payoff because now it's like okay, we've got this one person. They've taken the ski on. They're about to use it for their own evil plans, and Lara's left with nothing. And we're in this like dingy cave. Like suddenly we're not tomb raiding anymore. We're in cave raiding. We're in your minds. Uh. Which is, like, I think that's an interesting twist, and then something that I think people start ripping on Tomb Raider later on. They're like, this Tomb Raider doesn't even have tombs in it. And it's like, yeah, I guess, but... Um, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like a cave can still be very Tomb Raider feeling. Uh, I don't feel very comfortable about this. Um, one thing I kind of like is that note where I had pushed the box. Like, you have to push it there in order to... Um, you know, in order to uh, climb up to here. But just the very specific placement of it is also kind of neat. Uh, I remember this room being fun if you botch it up. Yeah, not that. Again, you can stand on this side. But, uh. I don't know if the boulder threw me off on that one. I don't know if the boulder actually knocked me out of path on that one. I didn't realize the boulder went off that soon. I saw it, but I was like, I'm not going to comment. Welcome to BR. Yep. Yeah, it's it just started right away. Okay. Okay, well. No need to worry, just wait for the boulder, I guess. And finally, at the end of all of that, you're back up to the top, where you can pull a lever. Yeah, something blows up. Uh... Uh, so I think you're just here for the looks. I don't think there's really any, like, hard... I'm, I'm gonna save here, just in case. I'm pretty sure that, like, what you pulled the switch, uh, revealed something in the previous room. And you're not supposed to just drop down. I think it's more just like, hey, like, here's the switch. It's the same jump both ways. It's a bit of a drop. There you go. So that TNT box is gone, and it blew up the uh, the corridor a bit, which allows you to jump and climb through. Level is almost done, but what is a level completion without at least some mild boss fight? Is he gonna show up? Hi there. You firing at me? You firing at me? Huh? Ain't nobody else here. So you must be firing at me. Sky on a skateboard. This little, little magnums, he just comes at you on a skateboard. He's not even that strong. Uh, uh. He's a goner. And what does he drop? He drops. <laughs> health. I know, I don't know about health. Uh, he drops the Uzis. Uh, these were probably a secret earlier, but I'd never... Found them, so... Ah, that one's on me. Uh, there may be some secrets in here. He was a skater, dude. He said, see you later, dude. He wasn't good enough for her. Now he's dead in a mine. It's a skate-off. Uh... <laughs> I was gonna say, like, oh man, that one looks like a missed opportunity for a boulder. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Climbing up at the end. Shotgun is a favorite weapon. Shotgun is definitely a favorite weapon. I think it's because, like, just being able to, like, you know, whack some heavy damage is always great. Um, takes out those centaurs really quick, which I... I th Ooh, actually, no, I think there's going to be centaurs still in the game. I was like, oh, wait, I'm in a new, new location. 
Am I gonna see the centaurs again? But no, I think they're still there. Oh, they'll, they'll show up, maybe. Alright. Bit of climbing, bit of climbing. And, uh. Suddenly now, there's a strange. Sandstone? I think that's what they're going for. I don't know what actually this is supposed to be. This is a, a bit of a confusing part, actually. I, I do remember struggling on this a bit. So, because you've got two floors. So... And then the worst part as well is that Oh gosh, the worst part is that you sneezy. It's like you can see that there's a door. And then it's like you're going down in another room. This is, this is like... Yeah, this is your, your Minecraft puzzle right here. Uh... Yeah, I think I just gotta like climb back up after pulling that. So then back the way I came to then go, hey, where was that block put? I think I can push this. Yeah, so this now goes where that last block was pushed. You couldn't push it back one further because it was pushing up against that one block. So now I've gotten there, which means I can pull a switch and not leave. I gotta leave the other door. <laughs> they don't make it easy, do they? Don't make it easy. So now, I can leave. I still got the magnums out. <laughs> still keeps going. There we go. And then just this door magically opens and then closes. And then you're like, what? What's going on there? <laughs> yeah, you can see, like, it opens up. And then it closes once you go, like, a little further. So you're like, ah, oh, okay. So now you gotta go all the way back. Uh... I think I could drop down here? Was this where the door was again? Or no? No, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, okay. And now... Cheese. <laughs> here's another guy coming at you. He comes at you with a shotgun. And you're like, not today. I'm standing at a reasonable distance. And jumping. He does a bit of damage. I think it's because Lara's not wearing any body armor. She just takes his bullets. This guy's not that tricky. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, of course, he's got the last of the three weapons. Just... Oh, there it is. <laughs> also, I love how, like, you look at, like, where you're from and you're like, Really? Was that what was causing me problems? This weird, like, corridor of rooms and such? Like, it's just here. It's just sitting there. But oh yeah, that, that is indeed the corridor of rooms that you are stuck in. It's a bit strange. Uh, one last catch before we enter this wonderful underground uh, pyramid. It's so underground that you can't even see the top. Uh, <laughs> prepare for... Alright, what, what do you call this? Excavating? No, excavating is digging. Uh, I'll just say, like, slope climbing. Where it's just like, here is a slope. A whole new tomb inside an answer. Exactly! Well, it's a- Okay, real talk. If you die in any cave, 
it is now a two. So, really, future prospects. So, <laughs> I look like I did a wacky jump just then, but no, you gotta, you got one last ledge over there, and then. Wait, what am I doing up here? Wait. No, yeah, I, I give that up. That's not it. Oh. It was over there. Did I step up the top? Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> we made two Mink Cube. There you go. One casual ledge over on the right. It wasn't the left, it was the right. And we got a switch. Okay, real talk. This is an ancient hidden tomb. The switch is just here. Bring some ladders. Bring some ladders, guys. Just easy. Except this guy had found it. This guy had gotten all the way here. Uh... No. Huh. Uh... Did I just blank out? Who makes the Donald Duck sound? Did I just blank out? I just pulled the switch and then... I didn't notice a single thing that happened. What? Uh... It's the end of level. Oh, it's gonna come back, don't worry. Yeah, what happened? That should have opened these doors, shouldn't it? Uh, am I blanking out? Because Lara's not got the key. Unless the key is just on top of here. the key on top of here? Hopefully it is. No. Um. Ah. Where? <laughs> where is the key? Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, that's that's probably what the switch opened. Ah. Okay. The old I opened a random door over here trick. Gets me every time. Gets me every time. What is this mythical triangle? That's the secret. It's not just a triangle. It's an outline of a triangle. But the Switch still has triangle. And out we go. Well... That level took a bit of time, but that's okay. Oh my gosh. I know, right? Another cutscene, and BAM! The whole mountain was a pyramid. Who would- who didn't see that one coming? Uh, cool. You gotta save your game first. So, welcome to, this is actually Atlantis, uh, in the pyramid, under the ground. This Half-Life 1 alien shit, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna reset the chat, just, I'm just gonna tab out and then fix that up. Uh, always, always does the doozy, that chat, always does. Alright, so I, I love, like, this beginning, cause you're like, ah, and this is, this is when you go at it. I'm gonna use the Uzis. The Uzis are like such a de facto weapon, because it's just like, you're not going to get much ammo, but I think this is a great point to use it, because a lot of these eggs open up. I know, right? Also, yeah, because I've made a home in the chat, now 
that's glitchy. Uh, true, true. I just, I, I, this is what I mean by like the payoff. It's like you get through like this game, you're going through all these tombs, you get kind of bored of like, you know, sand and, and dusty, rocky areas, and then suddenly, fleshy tunnels, like strange symbols just casually. It's only going to be for like the last hour of the game, but it's enough of a payoff, I feel, where it's like, like suddenly it's like this bizarre mystery. So yeah, like, uh, I think it'll all become clear maybe right at the very, very end of the game. Well, you can I'm, I'm aiming for it because it's, there's two levels left and I know it's like, I know it's two hours, 20 minutes, I'm like, oh, okay. Because what I want to do is that I don't have a great, like, I've got the, the unfinished business expansion I want to play, but that's only four levels. So I think that's probably just going to be a stream of its own, and that's it. And I can do that on the next stream. And then I'll uh, do a spooky Halloween game, and then I'll go back to Pokemon. That's my main schedule, I think. Uh, there should be a Switch. There we go. Should be around here. I love these, like, bone switches as well. It's just like, oh, delish. double bone switch as well like it's not just like oh you pull the switch and the door opens it's like you pull a switch and the door opens in the corner of the room oh lordy he coming give that one last open and bam the final door is open as well as this one, I believe, opening on me. There we go. <laughs> you know, when like the spooky game named Crisis in Kremlin? Uh, maybe. Alright, so this is also like my favorite and least favorite part of the level. I love old 90s games that just do these like impossibly large structures. So this is a giant central pillar room. You'll be coming into this room and making like one jump and then you'll be coming out of this room and you'll be at a higher point like after going through an area. So it's a very linear level. In fact, the, the next two levels are very linear. Uh, well, well, this and the next level because these are the only levels left in the game. Um, but it's a fun just... Okay, it's not quite fun. <laughs> it's an interesting way of just like how they, they you know, end it all. Uh, oh, it's just... I don't know why they put that ledge just a bit further away, but it'll come back to me in a moment. Uh, and they had to give textures of meat walls. I don't know what's with the meat bridge, though. I'll tell you that. I hate how this guy comes out if you, like, flex over the, the wall, does he? I'm pretty sure he does. I remember trying to do this jump, like, normally, and then it's just, it's just a little too far. Just a little too far. So you gotta, you gotta do the old-fashioned... Hug the wall, <laughs> wall below. You can really only tell what it, what it is if you're like watching the wall textures and you go, ah, that's the, the layout. So if you pull this, I believe it extends the platform by one. No, it doesn't, it doesn't even. It is a, yeah. Oh, ah. Uh. <laughs> she didn't see it. Didn't see it, didn't happen. Yeah, no, I, I, I love this payoff of this game. It's uh, perfectly cut scream. Yeah, exactly. You could take any part of this game and just like perfectly cut scream it. Uh, some more Uzi ammo is always good, I guess. It's two, it's two icons of it as well, so I guess I just need to do a jump of that. Is the monster going to come out? Or he's going to come out when I'm like, you know... When I'm struggling on the ledge. Ah. <laughs> yeah, he totally does. The jerk. Come at me. He's, he's, he's chilling down there. There you go. Oh, hi there. Kablooey! 
<laughs> oh, it's all good fun. Oh. I think you do need to drop down into the water for a brief moment, and I think that's because there's... Yeah. So this... I... Okay, I hate this room. If, if there's one room in the entire game I will hate, it's this one. Because... This lever opens the door at the end of the room, and it's timed. So you now have to go all the way back here, onto this ledge, and then manage to get to the end of the room without running out of time. Yeah, you gotta go fast. Oh, and also there's boulders. Well, one boulder, at least. It's not even like that, like, perilous of a time limit, but it's, it is a time limit. It's there. They, they do limit you. So, it's a bit of an odd one. I don't know what's up with it. Uh, we're in another room. Uh, I hope you're going to appreciate the heartbeat soundtrack, by the way. The pull the plate too much Donkey Kong. Okay, yeah, exactly. I hope you like fleshy walls, lava... And, uh, yeah, pretty much just fleshy flesh, fleshy, fleshy, flesh, flesh. All right, real talk. I, there's a lot of games in the nineties that like do this, like surreal, like, um, I want to say body horror, but it's not really body horror when it's not a body, but you know what I mean? Where it's like f flesh and bone in strange ways, like just like the texture of having something be... I guess, you know, like a mammal, we'll say that. Um, like, I don't know, there's like this fascination with games in the late 90s doing this. Particularly more mature games, of course, not your Nintendo affairs, but... Uh, nowadays you don't get it as much. I don't think you do get your fleshy rooms as much. Even like Doom feels a little toned down. Like... It's all like hell structures, like, oh, they made buildings. It's like, in hell they would probably make, like, a building out of, like, ev like human skin or something. I don't know, something mess like that. Come on, guys, you gotta up the ante. So, open the switch. I believe you can just wander back. But you can, you can see that there's lava flowing in that room. Maybe this wasn't the time one. Maybe there is a time one later. Uh, but yeah, this is just, just lava, chilling. I don't think these rock ledges were there before either, but sure, sure, I'll accept it. Okay, here, funny story, I'm the organizer, co-op creator of RP Sonic Chat, and every time when Metal Sonic joins our party, Stardust Speedway plays on the background. Ah. I'm curious about like RPing Sonic, because I I feel like I'm I'm terrible. I'm so obtuse at like role playing as well. I was actually okay. I was I was talking to a mate. He's, he was playing through um uh, Alien Isolation, and I said like you know like I'd be a terrible person when it comes to like doing anything seriously. So like he's playing this like spooky horror game, and he's like oh like you know it's doing some some neat things. The aliens next to him and all that stuff. And I'm like you know it'd be funny if there was like a dead body, and there'd be like a like a slippery when wet sign next to him or something, you know, like something like that. And then he said I should probably work for Obsidian. Uh, do you remember remember Sonic Shuffle? Uh, Sonic Shuffle, yes. I I know of it. I never did play it, um, but I do know of it. I love this like bass tone. I just ran through that and was like second guessing whether the save. I was like, nah, well, I'm gonna pick up the Uzi ammo. And I'm like, yeah, okay, that could have ended poorly. Um, so again, in this room, you hear him. Do you see him? Oh, hi there. Ah! <laughs> uh, again, you fall. You're probably dead. Actually, no, you're definitely dead at this rate. Like, there's no redeeming. If you don't hit a platform on your way down, you're hitting the lava. Get him! I 
I got the Uzi, and you got the Uzi. Well, actually, you don't have to use it, it's all me. So again, uh, just continuing on, but I do like how, you know, no longer, there's not really any, like, huge, long pushbox kinds of levels. I love this one as well, because it's like, I believe you have to pull this, maybe, maybe you don't. But I know that some of the switches open up the eggs. Maybe that was actually a dud switch. Maybe it's just like, there's definitely a kill switch in here. Okay, that's the second one. Nah. Ooh, ooh, he's coming at me with the spikes. I'm amazed how much Uzi ammo they're actually passing me, because I was like, oh, dude, like, I'm worried I'm not going to be able to use the Uzi much, and then it's like, wow, they, they really want you to use it. Ah. Oh my gosh. There you go. Last fleshy door that you might be able to fit through. Alright, okay, played story where Void came... Oh my gosh. Okay. Where Void came back uh, before a perfect chaos fight. Before him and his world. And he almost won. And the whole gang, Sonic, Tails, Me, Knuckles, and Ray almost died, but she's literally killed him in the last seconds with one punch. Ah. <sighs> this is gonna look absolutely bizarre to anyone who's, like, never played this game and, uh, just looking through this category. Uh, <laughs> looking through the Tomb Raider category, looking for someone playing just the regular Tomb Raider, and here am I playing fleshy, fleshy Atlantis. Ah, oh, okay, this is another, this is another one of those rooms. So, the boulder appears and blocks the way. So, what you need to do is pull this block and block the boulder from getting in the way of the door. And then you recycle the room, because logic. I don't know. I don't know, you leave the room, come back, the boulder's moved, but the box hasn't? Who knows? That's a bit of a 90s level design magic, I believe. Is there also a goodie back here? Nah, that's a bit strange, considering you can't just pull the door, or pull the block. So, alright. Round the fleshy corridor. I think that's just the guy from the other room. The inside's a burrito. Is the inside <laughs> my bowels after a burrito? They open up a Taco Bell in Australia. What have they unleashed upon us? We're gonna have another guy swooping down. Again, no ceiling yet. It keeps going. You know that there's a bit of level to go. Really likes that wall. Very fond of it. Hi there. I'm, I'm not really dodging anything with this, am I? He's flying, he's going. Cool. <laughs> Alright, so we got a bit of a slippery slope for Sony. We spent half our budget on this room. Dude, I'm actually amazed of like... I mean, I guess it's it's the fog. It has to be the fog. That's like the reason why it's able to, to render some of these rooms. Also, I guess also the map geometry is very simple. Like, because it's all, it's all quads. They're all just like these flat triangular quads. It's two triangles to render each of these small surfaces. Maybe, uh, they're probably not even more efficient than that. This is like, you know, Minecraft level of just like, you know... Well, actually, Minecraft has to do some cheaty things to, um, to make the models work fine. I believe they, uh, they, uh, encode the chunks as, uh, vertex buffer objects. So that they, um, you know, you just draw each chunk rather than individual cubes. And then, of course, you've got to manually, you know figure out textures and stuff, so that's obviously... Now this looks like a Mega Flowey from Undertale. Uh, it probably is. Um, I don't know if it's a direct... I don't, I, I don't know if it's actually like a direct influence, but that idea of like... It's suddenly like very surreal. 
Because, like, yeah, like, and, and this is something I love about, um, pretty much all of these Tomb Raiders. There's a certain degree of, like, uh, the, the supernatural alien kind of aspect. Maybe not alien, uh, all the time, but there's an aspect of just, like, you know, otherworldliness that you'll get from these games. And, uh, I don't, I don't know if you can do anything from up there. I think your goal is to get on this little, like, backbone spine. Maybe that's a ledge I can get on. A bit that's close to me. Look at that, I'm saving more often. I'm doing the good advice. Yeah, this... This looks like I could jump on it. Yeah, there we go. And then I guess I can walk onto the other side as well. Now, is that a slope? That is 100% a slope. They didn't texture the ground this time. Pull that aside. Get it out of there. Okay. What's behind here? A door! Who would have thunk? Alright, so the switch is up the top there. But I believe this is a timed run. It's not too precarious, but it does have a, you know, a bit to slip and fall. Alright. I wonder if I've even timed this right. Yeah, I guess I have. Okay. Cool. Climbing up some more. Oh, we're not going up all the time. What's the point if I just slide back down? <laughs> like, I might as well just take another stab at loading the save. Uh. So, given that it's October, we're starting to get into that, you know, wonderful end of year sale period. Oh, come on, bro. Come on. Oh, I'm shooting at his friend there. I'm shooting at his friend. Get him. Get him out of there. <laughs> and now with that, I should be able to be free. And leave and go to, to freedom. Climbing up. More Uzi ammo. Why not? Oh, I can't sing that. Look at TMC aid. I'm hearing some, like, terrifying stories of, like, DMCA when it comes to other sites. Like, um, ironically, I feel like YouTube is one where it's, like, you know, ev everyone rips on YouTube. But honestly, like, YouTube has done good steps to remedying the DMCA situation, it's not perfect. It's really not perfect. But at the very least, there's stuff like, okay, they've got tools to let you, like, counterclaim, and honestly, like, you can take things as far as, you know, you know, I, I, in my case, recently, where I was like, oh, you can take things as far as, uh, pretty much, they'll send you to court if they believe it's right. <laughs> Uh, and if, and if they don't see it in the court, then we found the ceiling of this room. Ah, oh, true. We're almost there. We're almost there. It's still, it's still a bit of level to go. It's such a tall pyramid as well. You don't think you've really climbed up a ton. But you definitely are. You definitely are. Um, I would actually love, I would love to be able to 3D explore this without the fog and just like really like delve into these levels because I do feel that, um, that there's something like really cool. Long Tomb, exactly. I feel like, um, Tomb Raider 4 tones down the length of the levels, but what it does, or so the size of levels, but what it does is that it's, um, it's got a lot of like 
per level backtracking or, or, or like hub level style backtracking so as in multiple levels are connected to each other in different ways and ultimately like you have to figure out how to get past that set of levels rather than just like one level at a time so here I was like oh like the Egypt level you know like I, I went back air quotes to the the previous Egypt level but really it was just you know the second level with the same area but it did remember my boulder it did remember the block so Uh, I believe that switch was just for these platforms. Nothing too fancy, it's just platforms. We've got another fleshy corridor. Yeah, this is a fun room. This is like, uh, it's very claustrophobic despite it being like three wide. But it's cause like, you know, low ceiling at parts. Uh, yeah, I actually think this is almost at the top. Yeah, that was a real hard to find secret, by the way. I don't know how many secrets I've found, but it's definitely not a great number. Uh, if I ever play Tomb Raider two, maybe much later on, we'll see. But uh, because because I got a few other games I want to play first, but I do like Tomb Raider two a bit more. I do actually like the second one a fair bit. Uh. But that's actually got a thing where if you find... Okay, so all the secrets are specifically three items uh, in the levels. Oh, oh, oh. Da, 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 da. Uh, I botched this up. Uh, um, I haven't botched it up. I've done it. <laughs> Lava stopped on me. Cool. Look at that. That's actually it. Oh, it feels so good to almost be at the top. <laughs> well, you think that's a ceiling, but yeah, no, there's a real ceiling above there. So, it's actually it. You can't take me alive. Oh, he shoots both. Save. Yeah. I just want to take out a guy. The Uzi ammo is too tempting. My Uzi ammo has been going up through this level. It started like, was it starting at 400? And now it's just like a yeah, thousand. I've been using it the whole level. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I, just, they don't want me to live. They do not want me to live here. Uh, I guess they stopped the spiky things for the, for the bit. Uh, this is an interesting part. I... Let me just try and remember. So, you've got these chairs. I believe you can push the chairs... If one of them goes back. Because you can't pull... You Sorry. Like, forward. Because you can't pull them back because you've got no ledge to stand on. Even though, yeah, you can't walk past it. Yeah, this one pushes back. Alright, so keep pushing it back. And continuing on. Ah, uh, this is a bit of a meme. Where I was like, uh, one of these switches kills you and then the other one is like, fine. What do you do? try. Well, I probably need to use a big health kit by now, so take the fall. Large medi pack. Uh, I'm going to do the jump from here. <laughs> I'm going to do the jump from here. <laughs> that looks a bit jarring, didn't it? And what did I get for reward for doing that? More ledges. Isn't that the beautiful part of this game? It's just like, oh. It's unrelentless. Like, the number of just corridors and caves and passageways. And then a switch. Push the wrong lever. And then you have 
jump, you jump out the top, and what do you get? It must have been the right lever. Well, I do want to, I do want to see what the other lever shows. Maybe it's a secret. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> it looks like you could probably jump behind it, so it looks like it's probably a secret. It's just an instant death trap for me. You gotta face the wrong way already, so... Yeah. Now that is 100% the wrong lever. <laughs> Uh, they both lead to the same area. They literally are the same level. That's the best part. So good. Alright, going up. Got more of these eggs. Well, at least they're not opening up on me. They're opening up on me. I kind of like how despite the aim being, you know, auto-aim, they actually kind of designed it alright to deal with, well, you know, you know, the enemies are also going to be kind of accurate, so it's your job to dodge them the best of your ability. This is what I get for killing all the gorillas, okay? This is my reward. I just gotta kill more Atlantis monsters instead. Okay, down the slope. Now this is a bit of an interesting room. This is actually something, uh, another bit of lore. I don't know, people look at it and they go, what? So this is actually a, uh, a fleshy Atlantean mirror Lara? It follows your movements, exactly. Uh, you can't damage it. It does hurt you, by the way, as well. And uh, you technically kill each other. <laughs> I, it's <laughs> it's a bit of an interesting one. I have jammed it. I have jammed it. Uh, I believe you got to jump at the ramp. That'll fix it. <laughs> don't don't break it. Don't break the fleshy monster. Okay, I fixed it. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Because it does need to follow you. So, I... Ah, oh, take a guess which ledge is which. One of these has a switch up the top. That one. Okay. So you want to go for the one with the switch up the top. Now, the thing's going to follow you on the other side. And there's platforms on both sides. So, the, because the room is technically mirrored, it's not even weird for the, the thing. But notice how there's a little, like, drop hole there. I'll pull the lever. And that hole opens up. So now, it's your job to walk around to that same spot on the other side of the room, but now you've created a bit of a difference in the mirror. This music sounds dramatic, but it's actually, like, no hurry. Or maybe the, the door closes on you, one of the two. But if you stand here... Ah! <laughs> it falls down. It falls out of the room. That's the only time in the game that thing appears, by the way. It's... <laughs> It's just there to be a puzzle. But it's a fun puzzle. And it's like, oh, this game, it's like, oh, it keeps a giving. It keeps giving. You think, like, you've seen it all, and it's like, ooh, massive sphinx, ooh, like, water puzzle, ooh. Like, fleshy Lara, like, double. <laughs> exactly. Pull out the crab right. Okay. You know it's good when the room's too wide. And they're giving you even more Uzi ammo. Did you need more? They've baited me. They've baited me. They've baited me. <laughs> He's so close. And yet, I'm so nimble. Okay, maybe, maybe not the most nimble. I'm not doing a good job of following him. There he goes. Tap new A. 
So I believe if you walk around all the way to this side of the room and pull the lever, uh, you raise bridge, I believe. It goes across the middle of the room. No. Maybe it's half a bridge and you gotta pull the other lever as well. Two levers. Oh my gosh, did you ask for more Uzi ammo? I'm pretty sure this bridge is about to fall on me. Because I'm pretty sure it's timed, but I will see how it goes. Okay, it's all good. Anyway, there's the ski on. It's just chilling here, why not? Now the level ends once you pick up the ski on. But, I just want to do one last thing. Uh, this is the ledge at the top of the room. Uh, you are going to be made aware of how tall this room is. Not very tall, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize I'd just jump that just immediately. Alright, well, I'm just gonna walk off the edge, and you'll see. She got about two and a half screams in there. That's a bit of a drop. So, anyways. Anyways, you wanna pick up the ski on. While she's clipping the ground a bit. You can't do this. We condemn you, Nakla of Atlantis, for your crimes, for the flagrant misuse of your powers, and for robbing us of our. You can't, I. Breaking the three bond of consent I love, that our people are. I love this like low pitch, just like we are going to Brazil. Our army, our warriors, empty from our pyramid, so that you can use the pyramid. It's powers of creation for your own mindless destruction. Mindless? Look at you! Neither of you have one squirt of inventive juice in your heads. Wasters. Let's Wasters. do it. Tihokan! You use the sacramental place as a source of individual pleasure. As some freak factory. They're survivalists, a new generation. A slaughter heap now. This is a bit of a bit of a cutscene. Lock you in limbo make your veins heart feet and that diseased brain stick solid with frozen blood greet your eternal unrest natla you won't rest either or your damned continent Atlantis. Oh, there she goes by the way did you get a name drop in there did you spot the name of this person again and you for a grand reopening i assume evolution's in a rut oh, this in engine cutscene as well all time low shipping out fresh meat will incite territorial rages again will strengthen and advance us even create new breeds kind of evolution on steroids then a kick in the pants those runs qualapec and tihokan had no idea the cataclysm of atlantis struck a race of langering wimps plummeted them to the very basics of survival again. It shouldn't happen like that. Or like this. Hatching commences in 15 seconds. Too late for abortions now. Not without the heart of the operation. No! Oh, there she goes. <laughs> there she goes. So, in comes the very last level of the game, where, uh, this thing hatches out. I feel bad for this thing, look at him! Wait, that's, the, that's not the right weapon. Kick it with the Uzis. Look at him go, he's gonna crawl around. Poor guy, man. He's, he definitely will wreck your, your day, though. So, uh, best to just... Keep running a bit around him, but these are so good. Uh, can we talk who died on this ledge a minute ago? That was Natla. That was Natla. The person who stole the ski on, only to then put it in there and then just... She just fell. 
but like she was the whole person who got you started on this investigation. Uh, she's she was the one who hired all the goons who I murdered in the mines. One day, Lara will reload a gun. Oh, he's coming at me. I... I did it. I hit one of the ledges. You can see they closed off the doors. So they're like, oh no. Well, that's a bit disappointing. Alright. She didn't quite get to Brazil, but... This guy does take a beating, but... I mean... The, the only real, like... If you think about this guy, is that he hogs a bit of space. <laughs> like that's the main way they kill you. It's just you're off on the side a bit. So maybe you just gotta out predict where he's gonna butt skedaddle to. Just keep running around him because he can't turn very much, or can he? I think the other thing is that while you are dealing with tank controls, you're also dealing with a camera that's a bit temperamental. Like, you gotta just know where you are on this ledge. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, we're good. Also, I guess, yeah, if you're shooting with one gun- oh my gosh. If you're shooting with one gun, you're dealing half as much damage as you could, so... Maybe side jumping is the key. So you got both guns on him at the same time. And of course, the same music. It's not boss music, it's literally the very first, like... You know, when a dog came to, to bite me. Okay, now, now I'm shooting the guns in lockstep. This is serious business. <laughs> and one last blow up, why not? There you go. So, again, uh, one thing I kind of love about this level is that it's not just a boss. The level keeps going a little bit. Which is kind of neat. Uh, there's, again, more Uzis in the corner. We broke the bubble. Exactly. Yeah, there's a bit more level to go. So, not quite out of it, but... Listen, if it took that long to climb the pyramid, now you just gotta, you know, sail down. Oh, the, the bubble's still there, but this is a broken bubble. It's all good. She didn't even get the shot on the scale. It's technically plugged in, but... Alright, so... We've got a block here. Where can you push the block? Can you push the block? There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the but it's, it's there, but it's, it's broken bubble. Um... I guess that's just pushed in. We'll, we'll see what, what comes to that. And also, you can see that there's a ledge up there. So... Ooh, maybe I shouldn't push that in. I realize that would be a bit dicey. Oh, I broke it after the load. Ah, uh, yeah, there's a few things with this game that do break when you load saves. It's a bit disappointing. Um, yep, alright, so push the box. Some more. Ugh. Nothing screams sneaking out of a pyramid than pushing a box over and over again. Alright, get out of here. And this is why I didn't want to push it <laughs> push it in, because it's like, oh, like I gotta push it out. So uh, there it is. And then I guess I could just jump that away. Up I am. Cool. And then just just for good measure, just have a breakable ground so I can't like prep this as easily. Yep. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. Cool. I got it. It's all good. Hey. Right. Nope. Nope. I'm not good at timing it. I'm not good at timing it. Hold on. One more go. One more go. There you go. First try. First try. 
Okay, what we got over here, we've got more side rooms, but if I scroll down, I'm gonna drop down, I think. You can see there's a ledge there, so I'm gonna need to get this box. Oh, I'm gonna need to get the box, am I? Yep, okay. Looked at the passport and died. <laughs> it's the double whammy. pull that box? I guess I could walk around it. But I should have climbed over it. Whoops. That's okay. I wonder which takes longer. Running around or pushing the box again. Oh, you do have to run around anyways. You do have to go around this way. Alright. Once more. <laughs> Back around. <laughs> Yeah, no, like, yeah, I, I keep saying, this ending of the game pays off. Thanks for the follow, Kai-san. How's it going? Okay, what have we got in here? Oh, boy. Alright. <laughs> There's another one of these rooms with the the slope jumping. Where it's like, oh, here's some, here's some slope. Enjoy. This whole ledge is not... <laughs> nice chill and Tomb Raider vibes. It. Yeah, the Tomb Raider vibes are all good. Oh, touching, touching a bit of the heat. Well, that's okay. You gotta, you gotta take a bit of damage from time to time. Like all the best things in life. Does that even mean anything? Probably not. I, oh, okay. I thought I got that one a bit fine. There we go. Uh, what's to my left? What's to my right? Well, this is gonna be enjoyable. <laughs> this is a hundred percent enjoyable. Slope right here. Yep. Okay. Go, 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 go. There you go. <laughs> cool boulder. Uh, we, we got two. We got two of them. Why not? Yep. Okay. Welcome. We sent random women to Brazil. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the, the uh, main villain just fell to her death, um, in the, in the plot, so, she's going to Brazil, that's the only way. Should I be grabbing the ledge? I should be using my medkit instead. So now, we're back where the ski on is. So, might as well grab it. Can you grab it? Actually, no, you don't grab it. You give it a bit of a shoot. That's how you stop the stop the problems. All right. So now with that, we now escape the way we came in. If you hear boulders, don't worry. Except they closed the fleshy tunnel on me. And they have made it very hard to live. Natla. Oh yeah, yeah, Natla. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, there's a bit of, uh, rocky boulders down here, so it's not, I don't know, the lava is drying up. You can see there's a little bit of a gap, just here. Uh, disregard the shaking, it's not important. Very kind of you. Dude, free trip to Brazil. Okay. Okay, this is, <laughs> this is, uh, where to burn your health kits. Actually, the <laughs> not very damaging, are they? But sure. <laughs> the vibrations just like, you know, amplify the situation, because it's like, it's not like this music playing. I love how it's like, you think you're safe, but no, no, you gotta do a backflip. Then who puts this here? Who puts this? Right here. Uh, 
Uh, oh, I, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Okay, okay. Now I walk. And now I walk carefully. Through the spikes. Because, yeah, you can do that. How many times in the game did they actually require me to walk through spikes? I think it was once. Now I'm going to Brazil too. Oh, true. Uh, I thought I'd line that up a bit oddly, but no, I'm, I'm cool. Alright. Uh, is this... No, no, that's just a slidey platform jump. But it's a slidey platform jump. <laughs> you look at it and you go, oh boy. Oh boy. That's a... I wonder how you get up the top there. Maybe you can climb the side of the wall? Who knows? Okay. It keeps going. <laughs> you can see, like, okay, there's a pendulum, there's a boulder, there's breakable floor. <laughs> Everything has come to kill you. It's all, it's all on the exit route as well. Like, that's the best part. This isn't just like, oh, like, Lara's just taking the long way. It's like, nah, Lara's taking the, you know, the deadly way. <laughs> they put a med kit there, like, as if you can get that. As if. <laughs> just bolt it. Whoa. Oh, yeah, the lava room. Again. Why? I think he actually might be able to get that med kit more. More easily. I, I love how the lava is also just like, you know, walls coming at you and not really, not really lava, but I think that's the charm of the game. It's just like, you know, it is very rudimentary like, to the point where there's no, too much kabooms. Do, I, I guess, actually, I've probably killed too many, you know, fleshy gorillas to... Oh, hey, you just gotta trust. And then... Not a running jump. The gutsy jumps. Alright, uh... The fire jumps are back. You remember them from the end of the grease area? Oh boy. It wasn't even the end of the grease area, it was just there. Ooh! Ooh! I didn't know you could actually make that, like, make that jumping distance. Alien monkey. Exactly. Yeet! Alright. Ah, now, you remember I mentioned the swan dive? This... ...is the bit. This is the bit, okay? So, we've got... We've got a ledge, and we've got a pendulum. So I gotta... I gotta time this very well. Oh, boy, boy. Because, yeah, if you're off-angle... Yeah. We started with Grease Monkeys, and then we're Russian Monkeys. We're not even in Russia! I guess Atlantis is, like, near Greece, isn't it? Uh, I really want to know how you get over there. Ah, you just got to jump a bit earlier. There you go. Good stuff. Now, yeah, this is the bit. So, you've done the platform. And now... Okay, so the platform's gone. Now, you saw that there was a little hole in the middle. I believe a regular jump. Oh, a regular jump puts you at the fun angle? Oh, what's the point? Okay, you don't even need this one dive. But, yeah, hold down jump, or hold down uh, walk, jump forward, and you do this one dive perfectly right in the middle. It's beautiful. That's the one point in the game where this one dive makes some sense. Thought you can escape the Russian <laughs> True, true. This is really what Russia looks like. Did you want more? More <laughs> Uzi ammo? Like, all of it? Jeez. Alright. Now, there's one last catch. This is at the base of the pyramid. You can see that's the slope of the pyramid, but what's that? What's that explosion noise? 
Why? Yes, uh, Natla has just casually grown some wings and is now shooting explosive bullets at us. This is, uh, one, one mildly mean boss fight. Because she's all the way up there. Come, on, come down here, fight like a real, um... I don't know, ammo packs look like sushi, they could be sushi. Oh my gosh, she's got the spread! Anyway, she's not that tough. But, be warned, because she is still, you know, contactable. She never dies. She'll get back up. So it's your goal to get out of here as soon- You can't bump off me and my brood so easy, Lara. Did she really get back up? Did she really get back up in like two seconds? Okay, cool. So she's just gonna keep get back back up, and it's your goal to ignore her as best as possible to get out of the the cave. But this is the final room of the game. Finally made it. Uh, yeah, no, I've enjoyed playing this game. It's been good fun. Get down from there. I guess she ain't flying, but. Definitely give me, give me my health gets a run for the money. I give you plenty of health though. Get out of here! This is a very gripping boss fight, isn't it? Ooh. <laughs> there you go. So the exit to the pyramid is just here. Don't be concerned with the shaking. Again, it's all environmental. I love how like all this like descent in this level and then suddenly you gotta, you gotta do a bit of climbing. You gotta do a little bit, just just a little bit here and there. You know, sprinkle it here and there. And then you climb down and it's like, nah, you, you didn't quite get out of here just yet. So, okay. Continue saving, because I don't trust, I don't trust myself at all. I can save scum the heck out of this, but... Here we go. Ooh. And there we go. And now, we're finally out of the pyramid. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> Still not quite yet. Keeps going up though. Dude, yeah, she's back from Brazil. It's a quick trip. I mean, when you got wings, I guess you don't have to wait for flights. And one last mega jump for good time's sake. How many saves did I make? Too many. <laughs> there we go. Run through the corridor and down the slope. And there you go. That's the end of Tomb Raider. On the on the DOS, <laughs> but the PlayStation and the Saturn version are basically the same game, so it's okay. The pyramid shines a wonderfully lit beacon, and just catches fire. Why not? Lara, of course, is uh, well outside by the time that those explosions go off. Oof. And wouldn't you know it, there's a wonderful boat that she can use. I, I guess she stole the keys for the boat, or they left the keys in the boat. I guess who's gonna, you know, who was gonna take it? It's not like they knew Lara was on board. And she sails away. Oh, one last explosion, for good measure. One last oof, yes, exactly. And there you go, yeah. I love this game. I really do like it. It's short and sweet as well, when you know what you're doing. I think that this took a total of maybe like seven hours? Seven and a bit? Maybe a little bit, but... The end. That's it. Uh, very PlayStation style, just screenshot, like, ending. But like, look how few people it took to make this game, man. Like, that's... That's crazy. That like, it only takes like eight people. They only list eight people and then the game's done. So, 
while I'm at it, I might as well just show this, just very briefly. Because I think someone's probably going to want me. The original Pikmin 3. Uh, so yeah, so that that was the game. I really enjoyed it a bunch. Uh, there's this option on Welcome the menu. To my home. I'll take you on a Use the D-pad to uh, get into the Lara music room. Lara tells you how to play the game in her house. Uh, if you don't like reading a manual. Uh, simply, she just goes, okay. Oh, you Let's can practice jumping. jumping. Jump you can button. do all this stuff. Here's uh, her little... Main hall. Main Sorry hall room. It's I'm not. It's very like. Delivery people haven't been yet. She's just gonna talk right over me. But it is like a you know, a very expositiony tutorial room. But it's like yeah okay. It's it's something. Uh, Run up to a crate and while it's very like old school. Forward, just like here's a tutorial action, button, but it's not quite it. called tutorial. It's it's the it's Lara's home. Yeah, she's got all these boxes. Like oh, I haven't had people to move it. Then she wants you to this do all this to platforming ballroom, uh, to I've teach you all the my own personal all the jump like distances. Think? Well, and let's ledge do some exercises. Climbing, all the stuff and you could be like, yeah, nah. Let's go for a swim. The jump button. Anyway, and the you, directions you go in the pool. Move me around underwater. And then she gets out and she's all like, <sighs> oh, air. Right now, I'd better take off these wet clothes. And then after that, the level just ends. So, it's a real short, like, tutorial level. It is no, like, requirement in any way. But it's just to uh, really show you the ropes. Other than that, yeah, that is the game. Uh, I've had a good time playing it. So, I would like to thank all of you for watching and for just commenting and all that stuff. It's been great. Um, with that, I will hit the end of the stream. Thank you all for watching very much. Uh, yeah, if you're new to my Twitch, I just stream on Mondays at 8.30pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time now. It's daylight time, it's not standard time. We changed the clocks forward an hour last night, two nights ago. So, there's that. Uh, but I just stream games at this time. I will be streaming the, uh, the free downloadable expansion for this game to create an unfinished business. Uh, as a set of neat levels, I think they were showing off, so that's all good. That'll just be one stream. And then I've got a uh, a mystery, I just guess a mystery, but I did mention it in the middle of the stream. I've got a, a spooky Halloween game that I'll play for the rest of October. Um, and then I'll get back into Pokemon stuff for a bit. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, you can follow me on Twitch or subscribe on my YouTube where I just upload these fonts. And that's about it. I hope you all have a great spooky October. Uh, which it's going to keep going. I'm going to keep doing streams in October. But <laughs> just have a good one. Alright, thanks everyone.